<laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hello, Bridget. Hello, Joe. What's happening? Nothing. I'm We're so here. excited. We made it happen. We did. We made it real. Happy and, uh, Sober October. This is the first podcast ever where Marshall is in the room. Oh my gosh, I feel He's, so honored. We are honored. This is a special one. He's just exhausted and I knew he wanted to just lie down next to me. My dog it's always comes here. through the YouTube show and we're always like, oh, she's going to knock over the lights in the middle, but you see her come in and out in the edits. <laughs> well, when uh, Red Band and I used to do the podcast back in the day, we used to do it in my office in my house when my kids were really little. So I'd hear like <laughs> screaming and crying <laughs> in the background, you know, she took my toy, <laughs> something like that, you know. <clears throat> so, um, thanks for doing this. Thank you. How's this, how's Sober October going? It's great. It's I want to thank you for doing that. Why is that? Because it creates a community and it's super cool for people to just have that month of clarity. I just think it's really cool. I'm grateful. It's my sober birthday in October. So I, you, it's like how many years? Six years. That's a lot. No, that's, that's insane. It's, you said weed's the hardest part. Yeah. Weed is. Are you sure you need to be sober from weed? Um, yeah, I've tried because here's the thing. Here's the kind of you really want to know what sure. kind of addict I am. I will I can do it for a while. I've tried so I was in rehab when I was nineteen. Whoa. For heroin. Oh Jesus. And I started using everything when I was twelve, thirteen Whoa. years old. Well, not everything, but I mean I started drinking and smoking weed. I, I mean Where'd I you grow up? All over. I moved every year and a half. It's a long story. Oh. Um, my I, my whole thing sounds like an improv and like I'm making it all up, but it was just chaotic upbringing. But I'm from the East Coast, and then I graduated from high school in Minnesota. So to give you, we just moved a lot. I went to like 11 schools in 12 years. So I started drinking really young. I started smoking weed right around when my parents got divorced. And then I was pretty much a daily smoker from the day that I found weed. It was like, ah. Uh, Really? Like, oh my god! I, I it, like fourteen. I so loved was it, it. A release? Was it an escape? Was it just a perturbance of normal? You consciousness? know, my my upbringing was kind of chaotic, and honestly, I think that I owe weed a, a debt of gratitude because I don't know that I could have been fully present for what was going on in in the house, um, and 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 not like killed myself or done something worse. It was just too much for like a small developing brain to handle and Jesus. we'd put enough of that nice like fuzzy distance between me and the like chaos that's so a good name for a band fuzzy distance <laughs> fuzzy distance <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have i'm gonna start it it's just gonna be me alone crying on stage. god damn i had no idea it was and so it was it was good except then um it, I it escalated after I was uh, drugged and raped when I was 18. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, not to get heavy. It's part of my story. It's horrible, but bad shit. Ha like, one of the things that I've had to come to terms with is, you know, I don't blame myself for that happening, but I, I do have to take responsibility for the fact that when you're a woman or a girl and you're out getting blacked out, and in this instance, you're around people who are bad, things happen that are not good it's sh it's, it sucks but you know if i had daughters i would be like watch your fucking drinks and like right. be careful and don't get bl don't try not to black out because you don't know what is gonna go down there are so many people that i know that have been drugged so yeah many. i know so many. i know the the thing about that that's so weird to me well a i don't i i try to make light of everything <laughs> because I have to in order to survive. Well, you're a comedian. And I'm from the East Coast. It's just right. how I handle <laughs> shit. Like my family's from Rhode Island. I, my dad's Oof. one my dad's one of ten. It was mm. a roast battle growing up. You know, <laughs> like you either you, if you were the sensitive one, they're like, Oh, you're gonna cry about it. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't survive. You had to just be like on on top of it. That is Rhode Island, Boston, Connecticut. That's you like can't the attitude you're out getting there. roasted yeah. and you either keep up or you're like, you're out. You're uh, you're the loser in the family. Yeah. And you're drinking too. Too, obviously right. oh, for sure heavily so um he I, I unfortunately was like if you're gonna do that like use enough to make sure that i don't come to in the middle of it like right don't be an amateur bro like because i have memories of it and kind of came too so Ugh. it was like i would have preferred just the nothingness of you know it being launched like stuck in my subconscious so i think what was the whole cosby situation like for you then when, oh, when that was revealed? i wrote a whole thing about it because i wrote this piece on medium um bill cosby raped me kind of because when i <laughs> <laughs> 
because it's a little clickbaity. Um, <laughs> because when all that stuff came out, I was like, oh, really, ladies? Like, you're going to come forward now? And I had to stop and, like, evaluate my own my own cynicism and just response to that right and writing is pretty much how i process everything it always has been and so i'm like i'm just gonna write about this and see what comes through and essentially it was that internalized shame that had i had been holding on to mm. was i was projecting it onto these women who were because if if a bunch of girls from minnesota came forward and said this sleazy dude you know drugged us and raped us back in the 90s <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm 40 i'm 40 so yeah it was like the 90s um i would come forward and and support them in support of that if it was the person who did it to me i wouldn't be like come on ladies it's a little late for this now right but that was my kind of gut instinct why so, do you think that was i like i said i think it's internalized shame i think i just i i had not forgiven um, the girl in me, the the young girl in me who who blamed myself. I didn't tell anyone when it happened. I I, I woke up and of I'm lucky I'm not dead. I'm lucky I made it to get sober six years ago. When I look at how my trajectory was, and so I ended up um, like kind of coming to. And the weird thing about roofies is that you don't really remember. So I like thank the guy for having it. You know, it was like, oh, thanks for letting us crash in this place I didn't even mean to crash at. And I think, um, and then things started coming back. And one of the, my friends, I think something happened to her too. And and um, it's crazy I'm telling this story just based on what happened last week. So um, I just went we went to like the apple river which was this place in minnesota and just i got blackout drunk for like the next five days i couldn't i couldn't handle it i felt ashamed because i was drinking underage i had i was working in a restaurant i had a lot of um older friends we were downtown in minneapolis i felt super cool and my friend and i both have the exact last memory and then i have memories of like crawling around on the floor and trying to find a phone like just bad things and um I always hesitate to tell them, too, because I know, know there are guys <laughs> they are like, yeah, tell me more. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> do defensive mechanisms. And, um, yeah, so then I just went bananas. I started doing hard drugs that year. And you think you, think you did that as a response to that memory? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I just was trying. I was already running from so much. There had already been my... And that was like uh, a tipping point? Yeah, my my stepdad was a little crazy. I don't really publicly talk about it all that often, but it was um, like whatever. Uh, met, like crazy stepdad, you like it, right. I think you can figure things out. Um, and it was really chaotic, and and uh, then that kind of escalated um, my drug use. I found hard drugs. And like then I tried um, speed and math, and I hated it because my brain already races. I don't need any help with that. That's rare though that somebody doesn't like speed and math. Oh, I hated it. Most I hated people it. Get on that stuff. Love no, it. no, you got no. Lucky. I don't. I loved heroin. I didn't get lucky. <laughs> well, heroin is like that maternal like womb thing. Right? I think it's also. Um, I don't. Cr I don't need stimulation for my brain. I need. Mm. I. I always wanted relief from this were you snorting it what heroin yeah and smoking it and did you ever get to the point of shooting it it it, it was right before i quit so it, once and then i was like i'm gonna die essentially because you realize like oh, i was gonna, i was 89 person. pounds in 19 i totally had oh. like one of those hallmark movie moments i had been out here with a boyfriend and he had a movie and we were um just like it was like a mo Sid and Nancy movie. I was parent. I was doing so much blow. I had delusions of like he, he I, I had was a movie. Meaning he was making a movie. He was in one. He's in a movie. And we were out here, and it was just chaos. And we were like, uh, uh, it was the shit that I did. How did you get into, how did you get into comedy? Um, that was in, not for a while, thank God. Um, I got <laughs> dared to do that in 2010, basically. And really? So somebody dared me to do it, and the comedy store is where I popped my cherry. And um, it was on, like, one of those bringer shows, and it was an absolute shit show. Like, every fucking 
stereotype that you ever heard. People were doing blow in the green room and like everybody, it was like- Oh, all you were in the belly room then? No, it was on the main stage, but it was one of those like- Really? Main, it, was a, it was when, it was in like the years before the resurgence. Oh, that's when I was gone. <laughs> yeah, was you weren't around. from 2007. Yeah. You, so you, you got there in the darkest days. Oh, it was fucking dark. They say the darkest days were like 2007 to like 2012. It was dark. And then my set went okay enough that I decided I wanted to like do it again. But that was many years after after the like trajectory. So I long story short, I ended up in rehab um, at 19. And I was there for seven months. Seven months? I was in the halfway house. <laughs> So you were I, arrested. No, I put myself in a halfway house, but it was like How does that work? It's you just, like Can you put yourself in jail? No, it's not jail. Then how can you how come you can put yourself in a halfway house? Because a halfway house is like that in between jail. It's not <laughs> mandatory. <laughs> so they let you put yourself they're like, it's, "Hey, look, I'm fucked up. You mind if I just hit, hang out here for a while?" I couldn't go home because of my home stuff. And oh, so God. I basically after 2 weeks my <laughs> the insurance was up and they're like, "Okay, you're free to go." I'm like, "Nah, I can't go. I'm going to do drugs in like 2 minutes." And so They let you stay. No, I took a bus and put myself on general assistance. And Minnesota, the joke is it's Minnesota land of 10,000 treatment centers. It's like a great place to get sober. And so I put myself on basically welfare. And then I found a place. And I'll never forget, I called this place. And the woman answered. And she was like, I was like, hi. And I had had some guys try to do stuff to me. So I, I was looking for an all-woman's place. And this woman was like, you ever heard? I was like, "Hi, what's it like here?" She's like, "You ever heard of boot camp?" <laughs> I was like, "Sounds perfect." <laughs> I needed that structure. I needed something, and so they, I basically, because I was on welfare, they accepted me, and it was like me, and I was the only white girl. I was by far the youngest. It was, it was basically a lot of women just who the judge said like, "Go to this program for three months, and you won't go to jail." It was nuts. Dude, that's an education. Oh, yeah. I mean, I realized what a privileged little spoiled brat I was. That's for sure. Mm. And then I never, but I also hide behind that. So I never wanted to share anything. And they're like, Every, it's all relative. Everyone has their problems. And I'm like, yeah, but these stories versus mine, they're not. <laughs> it's not I feel like I just had too much. And <laughs> like, so your stories, you couldn't even share. And then I started sharing them. They're like, damn, white people are fucked up. <laughs> 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 and that was when I learned it was really an early lesson in like all this intersectional bullshit. It was very early lesson for me that like it doesn't matter. It does not matter what color your skin is, what like when you're an addict or when you're at rock bottom or mm. we're all humans just at uh, like fucked up trying to get out of our own way. Yeah. And so that was that was an interesting experience and then I got in my car and moved to LA. <laughs> Well, your fucking Twitter feed is hilarious. You have one of my favorite Twitter Thanks. feeds. Thanks. Wow, that's an honor. I either like or retweet your shit all the time. I, I love... I Well, I I was recently in D.C. and somebody... and <laughs> They they said that, um, oh, this is Bridget. She's a Twitter celebrity. And I was like, what the fuck? I've never wanted to kill myself. There's more. nothing wrong with being a Twitter celebrity. Marshall's trying to say hi to you. Hi. Hey, buddy. Hi, hey, buddy. He, I didn't even notice he got up. That's all right. He's yeah. my best friend now. <laughs> Marshall's everybody's best friend. <laughs> How dare you, Marshall? Yeah, he's a ho. Um, yeah, that that I forgot where we were. Well, you were t sorry, you were you were talking about. I how got distracted by Marshall. Intersectional. Oh. Yeah. Hi, Marshall. Come here. I just don't want him to get. No, in the I know. Wires. He wants to play. He starts yeah. playing with him. Hey, buddy. You can play. You want to lie down? Yeah, I just don't want them to get in the way. Um, um, so you you were saying that you realize that everybody has their problems. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It yeah, what the fuck is I going really on. learned a problems. lot. Those women, it was run by lesbians. They they like taught me some shit that stuck with me my whole life, like cluttered room, cluttered mind. Mm. I loved that one. It was basically like they were very strict. But what happened was I learned how to be a really crafty drug addict. So I was like, well, as long as my room is clean. Right. I don't have a problem because I came I came to LA at 19 or 20 I guess mm -hmm. and this was like 2000 and I started um, uh, interning at this website called Buddyhead. It was like this old music website and they were all punk and they had the number one gossip site for music in town at the time. 
and everybody was obsessed with this um, with with this website. And I then have a feeling Marshall is a distraction here. He seems like a little. He bit seems of a, a little restless. <clears throat> Buddy, come here. Come here, pal. Come here. He's so cute, though. I can't here, bear to kick him out. People. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. Say hi to people. Oh. Hi. Hey. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, is the sweetest dog in the world. Seriously. People have been asking for him to be on the show forever. He's just going to, he'll do the rounds. He'll go to you. Hi, what are you doing in here? He'll go to you, he'll get pet. Then he'll I'm go to fine. Jamie, he'll get pet. But the, I just don't want him to interrupt the conversation. No. It's a little bit of a distraction. That's fine. I'm all over the and place. And I don't want him to yank any wires out either. Hey, he's going to Jamie now. Told you. Doing the rounds. <laughs> That's what he does. They're such like love sluts. Yeah. It's amazing. Goldens are love sponges. So is my boxer. She'll go yeah. sleep from one bed to another to another. Yeah. She gets all the love. Well, he doesn't. He's not allowed to sleep in beds. Yeah, it's smart. But, uh, <laughs> but he's uh, he's very loved. It's just um, I've never had a dog like that before. They're just so different than any other dog I've ever had. Because it's just he's just a constant friendly lover. Mm -hmm. You know, he never gets annoyed with you. He never wants to go lie down, but he's always happy when you say hi to him. Yeah, you just start talking. His just tail like pure wagging. unconditional. Yeah, I mean it's crazy that those used to be wolves. I that know. They turned them into this thing. I know. Over they domesticated of years. themselves. Sort of. Didn't they? Yes. Was it like a mutual thing? Well, initially. But, you know, there was what? actually a display going on right now that I went to last weekend at the, what's that science museum in L.A.? What is it called? The California science thing? The one downtown? The one, yeah, it's downtown. The one next to the arena, where yeah. the, the football arena. I think it's the California Science Center. Whatever yeah. it is. it's There's a whole uh, thing on dogs. Okay. And it's a whole thing on, there's one of them, it shows how dogs became dogs from wolves. And the, the slow process of their ears starting to droop and, and their noses, cute. their snout starting to yeah, shorten <laughs> yeah. and they became smaller. And I mean, every animal, and this is something that they didn't realize, I don't think, until like the last couple of decades. For the longest time, they thought that wolves were wolves and dogs were a mixture of wild dogs and cannons and all these different animals. And right. then they, they realized, oh no, these are all wolves. Wow. Like a fucking chihuahua is a wolf. <laughs> I just have such a hard time believing that. It's hard to believe. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. That's like saying a Prius is a car. I just, yeah. I, I just have right, a, a challenge. Right, a Prius came <laughs> from a Corvette. <laughs> I just can't. It doesn't make any sense. No. That's true, though. Yeah. It is true. They found out that somehow or another, human beings manipulated, you know, through selective breeding, they took a wolf and turned it into a, like an English bulldog. It's crazy. But it's I love so them. strange. Well, that's... Yeah, I should let him out. Just let him out because he probably he might have to pee or something like that. And he wants to go talk to. He's going to the door because he wants to go get love from everybody else. Too. Yeah, all the security guys. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking cutest dog of all time. Though. He's so cute. I've never. They're so good to have around. Oh yeah, he's like he. Whenever you feel bad, you just go to him and just he just gives you love and kisses. Their and, presence is huge yeah. for things that are pretty silent for the most part. Mm -hmm. When my dog is boarded or whatever, it's like what I feel like there's this like giant presence that's gone. But it, you know what it is though? It's like emotional candy. <laughs> Like, you shouldn't have candy all the time, and you should have people in your life. Yeah. Right? You shouldn't just be one of those fucking weirdo dog people. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, even yeah. like people. that no. just like dogs. <laughs> you know, just like candy. I don't even like food. <laughs> Fuck vitamins. They're just eating candy. You know, there's yeah. people that are like that. Oh, I don't go to dog parks because of that. Oh, it's so true, right? The dog park scene in L.A. is psychotic. Oh and there's always someone with a dog that can't control. No. I, that's been me before, too. When I was, when my one of my dogs, one of my pit bulls was a puppy. He was like five months old maybe six i would open up the door he would run to find the first dog he could find yep. bite him in the face yep. I'd be like, what the fuck yep. bro like I, I had never had a dog like that before yeah and i didn't know how to handle it i didn't know that like okay you can't this is a, a male dog with his balls and he's five six months old you literally can't bring him around no. with dogs unless you like have him rigorously trained yeah and it needs to be rigorous like yes. shot collar <laughs> well someone yeah and someone has to show you how to do it correctly yeah that know? the dog after seeing two attacks in a dog park i was like <sighs> okay <that>. yeah, <laughs> i'm out that. no it's this, too people bring fucking crazy dogs to dog parks yeah and i treat my dog i mean there's some I, I there's some leniency but i'm very much like it's a dog yeah. i'm not one of the like 
let's dress it in sweaters and have a birthday party for it. I'm like, yeah. no, no. <laughs> We're not having a birthday party for my dog. <laughs> <laughs> birthday party? <laughs> We're not putting any kind of Halloween costume on this pet. <laughs> no, my kids do all that shit to Marshall. <laughs> they do all that shit to him. You know, they dressed him up like a fish the other day. They got him a fish costume. Mm, I'm like, look, probably. he's a fish. I'm like, no, he's a fucking dog with a crazy... He's like, I can't move. <laughs> this weird outfit on. Yeah. Um, so you were talking about Minnesota and you're talking oh, about being then I moved rehab, here. Then you moved here. Yeah, and then I went back east. Um and then I was uh in the restaurant industry for a long time. So basically I was in rehab and then I left rehab. When did you start writing? I always wrote. You always wrote. Did you always publish things? Like when did no, you No, I didn't know that you can get paid to do you it. You were just writing for just to I self-expression. was I started writing, I mean, my journal, holy shit, from that first rehab. Have you ever seen that movie Seven? Yes. Where he has like that's what my journal is. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. That movie still fucks like, with my head. Like, why am I still single? That movie still fucks with my yeah, head. Yeah. I saw it in a theater, and I remember driving home thinking I was going to get murdered. That was Kevin Spacey. Yeah. I'm just realizing that now. Yeah. Boy, Being fuck. creepy as fuck. Yeah. But, but one of his most brilliant roles. T- well, American Beauty was another one. Creepy mm-hmm. as fuck, but one of his mm-hmm. most brilliant roles. Mm-hmm. I think that, I think, oh God, I hate saying this. You think Gwyneth deserved it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I wonder how fucked up you have to be as a human to be able to play someone that fucked up. I know, I know. know To go to that place. Yeah. Mm. I mean to not just to go to that place, but you fucking believed it hook line and sink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, like the Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, I fucking believe it. I haven't seen it yet. Spoiler alert! I know. No, it's, it's fine. It's been two weeks. Shit. I know. Well, I'm mean, not gonna not gonna spoil it, but it's. It I'll was a dark t- week for me. I couldn't go see it. I wasn't emotionally strong enough. <laughs> you were, it was a dark. You get dark weeks. Well, well just because of some shit that happened that was crazy that triggered all the stuff from when I that we started this conversation oh, as when you had the conversation and it was with like, that girl. Yeah, no, it was crazy. It was like a crazy <laughs> yeah. uh, PTSD is real. You know, it's I real. hate I hate that the word triggered has been destroyed. Yeah. Like it's been destroyed because. Because it does, when you have had trauma, and there's a brilliant book, um, The Body Keeps the Score, and he talks about how it lives in your body, basically. Mm-hmm. And you and he worked with vets, and, you know, it's crazy, like, he in this book, I've been rereading it again, and he's talking about how when he was writing to get some, from the VA to get... Um, like a grant to study PTSD, they were like, no, we don't even really think it. They, it wasn't even part of their profile, which is crazy to think now that PTSD wasn't part. Of it wasn't profile. even like a thing. It was well, it a brand. Shell shock. It was. Remember? Yeah. My grandpa. I mean, I have all my grandpa's. I should have brought some. I, my all my grandpa's letters from World War Two. I mean, that guy, <laughs> it, it's, it's cr- he would be getting bombed, basically going on, un- getting underway every single day for months. And he's like. The most striking thing to me is how he's like, I don't want to feel sorry for myself. I know nobody would want me to feel any self-pity. I'm like, we live in the biggest pussy generation of the entire... We live in just the whiniest culture. He's literally at war, and he's like, I'd hate to be whining. I'm like, well, don't don't you war, think that the Grandpa? reason why we have such a whiny culture is because things are so safe relatively? Yeah, I, I do, definitely. Because but, the people that are complaining, for the most part, the people that are egregiously complaining, <laughs> they don't have real issues. It's just so weird. I always see this like, I am fighting for my life. I'm like, right. no, you're not. You're on fucking your couch getting Postmates. Like, <laughs> right. what do you- well, your, your, your story, like when you tell your story, like that's one of the stories that like legitimately makes you sit back and go, holy shit. Okay, those stories nobody gets upset at. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a lit. I mean, I don't mean they don't get upset that it happened to you. I mean, they don't get upset at you expressing this like it's some horrible, disastrous event in your life because it clearly is. Well, yeah. Right? And and it is. That's why I hate that the word triggered has been so destroyed right. because it is a thing that people have to. And so in this recent, um, this girl is my hero. And this recent thing that happened, it was like. This person walked in into a situation and she looked distraught and like long story short, we ended up at a rape trauma center together. And it was when you said she walked into a situation. You it's mean- like we it's hard to uh, she gave me permission to like talk about this if it came up. And and so I'm OK with it. She, Just don't say her name. Right? No, no, right. no. And I know I'm not telling her story. No details of hers. Um, 
Um, so I was in a 12 step meeting and she kind of walked in and looked distraught. And I'm not one of those girls that's like, hey, welcome. Like, you know, it's not <laughs> like leaving the fuck alone. Right, but you saw. Um, but I saw the look. And I, this is where I might actually cry. Um, I saw the, I recognized that look. Like, it wasn't like I'm having a bad day in sobriety. It was like, um, something happened and I just made a beeline for her and I was like are you okay and she was like no I'm not um and she said like something bad happened to me and we went left that there and then we went out onto a bench and we were I was like how old are you and she's like I'm 19 and young you know and and I was like she told me what happened and something bad had happened the night before and um I was like well and I told her I shared with her I was like that same thing happened to me at, at your age and I was like and she's like, it was, you know, like that look of like relief that mm -hmm. somebody could understand. And she's like, what do I do? And I'm like, well, I know what not to do. And it's nothing. So, and it, I'm telling you, it was, it was like, that girl is so brave. To, I'm like, what compelled you to even walk into that, into the meeting? What I wasn't even going to go to that meeting. And then when we ended up in that center, like the counselor was so amazing. The nurse was so amazing. Every, it was like a warm blanket of love was just wrapped around her. And Was she in sobriety? Like, it like was a, like I can't. It's like not really my story okay. to tell, but it it, it was um she was she was fucked up, yeah. So um it, it wasn't like dead sober, but right. um uh yeah. So it was just it was basically like my story that she was telling. Wow. So it triggered like all. It was weird to hear my story as she's relaying it, and I'm having like flashbacks. Right. So last week I was like, <laughs> I haven't really told anyone I'm even gonna like talk to you or anything because some of my friend was like so what have you been doing to like get ready i'm like well i've been crying a lot and eating a lot of cake <laughs> like, <laughs> to get ready to talk here just like because they're like yeah I'm like it's just joe in a conversation but i think people think it's like a, you know some people it is it people, is well, things get weird with people when, and, when there's an event coming yeah you know? well and it was my anniversary of six years mm -hmm. which always is like when did that happen that was friday oh so um, it was amazing, you know, it was amazingly healing, like, too, uh, to be able to just, it was one of those moments where um, there's, there's, where something bad that happened to me, I was like, oh, suddenly this has meaning. Like, I can use this right. to help someone else. And that's, you know, I interviewed this really brilliant woman who escaped from, like, um, a million things and her whole thing is like if you what good is our freedom if we can't use it to liberate somebody else and you know come circling back to like the world war ii and this generation ayan um hershey ali says that basically this generation is like they're like trust fund babies with freedom because they're so far removed from having to fight for freedom that they just take it for granted that's an interesting way of describing it. Yeah. Trust fun babies with freedom. That's Ayan. She's just brilliant. Yeah, she is brilliant. That is a that's that's a great way to look at it too. But it's very hard for people. Um, without struggle, I think people don't know what to do. Yeah. And, and they they create problems that don't exist. It's a, a very common thing. I think human beings are designed to uh, deal with so many different problems that could come up in your environment, whether mm -hmm. it's physical threats, mm -hmm. danger, um, <clears throat> all these different things, um, community, all, all these different things that you're designed to handle. And when those things aren't there, your your brain and your body starts to manufacture things. Like right. a lot a lot of people that you see that create drama online. Yeah. You know, like there's I, so many people that I follow secretly. And this is what I do. I bookmark their Twitter page and then I go to it <clears throat> just when I need like a dose of madness. Yeah. And there's YouTube videos like that as well. And, you know, there used to be blogs. You could go and read where people were just obviously their real life is so meaningless that they're seeking all of this drama yeah. online. They're, they're seeking this distraction online. And there's people that I follow that are involved in arguments 12, 14 hours a day. I and, know. And I can relate, okay? <laughs> I, I truly can relate because I've been mad. I'm madness, like crazy. Yeah. I've been crazy before. And I'm still definitely a little crazy. But yeah. I, I get it now. I, like, I, I know what it is that makes me crazy. No. Oh. No. 
how do you know how did you figure out you were crazy like how do you how did you self-reflect i guess i think i think i know i'm I'm honest with myself yeah yeah uh isolation tank Mm -hmm. uh, drugs Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the drugs that have helped me like psychedelic Mm -hmm. drugs yeah all those are the whatever you tell your therapist you could you could lie to your therapist you can't lie to mushrooms yeah mushrooms you go what bitch yeah look at this Woo! yeah yeah I'll show you everything and so DMT will, too yeah and Woo! edible pot all yeah, those different yeah. things all those different things will show you all the real problems that you have but yeah. i i know what these people are doing i know that it's a site people get caught in cycles of 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 like creating bullshit and and then they get in cycles of like festering and you know jamie kilstein yeah one of the things, you know, Jamie is a reformed super social yeah, yeah, justice yeah. warrior. Yeah. One of the things that Jamie told me was that, like, he would, like, say something about someone. Like, this guy's a Nazi and a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. He would say it on Twitter. And then he would be glued to his phone looking at every response, you know, every response yeah. that came in on Twitter. And he'd be reacting to it or freaking out or angry There's or, a lot of or people getting like love this. from it <laughs> or getting getting anxiety from it. And then people would turn on him. He'd be like, no. Yeah. And then he would fucking fuck you and go back at him. And it's just like this thing where you're trapped in it. You're trapped in it all day. Yeah, yeah. Faisal and I were talking about this, uh, the kid from Iraq who was on my podcast. And he was, I was like, it's so weird. And, you know, they in the, all those like dystopian books, it was like this wreckage everywhere. And then you plug in to get to a better place. And I feel like when I unplug, it's like a Disney movie, you know? <laughs> like, yes. I'm like, do, 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 do. and I then I plug in and it's like chaos. And I don't want more. a flip phone. I don't want a flip phone. But I, I want get one. It, I, I, get I know. I know. I, I know. like taking pictures of things and I like having the option. But I've done much better over the last six months of being way more disciplined with my time. Yeah, yeah. You you know, like sometimes I'll have, like, I, go, I want to check my phone, and I go, don't, don't do it. So I'm like giving myself advice, like f- the same way I've become my own therapist. Yeah. I've given myself, I give myself advice on, don't just randomly just start reading Google stories. Yeah, yeah. You know, I go, I'll look for information. I'm like, there must be something but going on. But some of the funniest things that you do, like my favorite of your routines are your rabbit holes. When you oh, take us yeah. through your internet rabbit holes, those are like my favorite <laughs> bits that you do because like I can- cat. Yeah, because I can identify so yeah. much with that. Oh, like, yeah. you'll be, I, and I always joke, like, I know I'm in trouble when it's like, maybe 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> because all roads lead to 9-11 was an inside job on the internet. Like, yes. that's just, when all you're- All roads lead to Tower all, 7. <laughs> every single one. If you're finding yourself like, yeah. hmm, what did happen there? You're like, okay, get off. And well, the problem is off. you can find, no matter what the subject is, even if it's completely ridiculous, you can find someone with a compelling argument that it makes sense. Yeah. And then you watch a YouTube video. Yeah. And the, the problem with YouTube videos is, too, there's no <laughs> one standing there going, that didn't happen. That's not what he said. That's not real. No, 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 no. Architects and engineers to 9-11 truth is not all the architects. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Let's no get a real checking. structural engineer. <laughs> Hold on. No, no, no. You're missing 30 seconds of that video where the center of the building collapsed. <laughs> Hold on. That happened minutes before. Hold on. That's yeah. when the, the beams were cut during the demolition of the building. That's not what happened. <laughs> you need all that. You I mean, need the like, fact checking. Oh, it's so you hard. don't. Because you get a, like a flat earth video. You'll start oh, watching yeah. those motherfuckers. You're like, what? <laughs> Is this real? Are we really on a, we're on a disc? I watched that like Zeitgeist movie or whatever. <laughs> oh, yes. and it's like, I'm like, mm, there's some good points. <laughs> there's nothing. Well, Zeitgeist is not. That's Peter Joseph's movie. That's not completely preposterous. Yeah, no. That's, that's a very good movie, yeah. I think. But it, it's not. There's. I think any time, like if someone wanted to write a blog on you, like this is Bridget. This is Bridget Fetacy. There's not. There's, there's just one voice. That's not right. you. That's someone writing about you. If you were there, you'd be like, well, that's not entirely true. And yeah, I'm like that sometimes, but 99% of the time, I'm not like that. Yeah, like, yeah. You can't cherry pick the worst aspects of me and write a blog about, right? You'd be able but to say that. But people do that. Yeah, they do do that. I mean, that but it doesn't, I've... but it's not real. No, it's not. And that's the problem with someone writing a blog about <laughs> you or making a YouTube video about you right. or even tweeting about you if they went on a tweet storm. You know, I, I read Bridget's Twitter feed and she's a fucking rancid cunt and this is yeah, all the problems yeah. with her. 
And why do I'm, they do that? I'm fi- I mean, it's interesting too because you know you are very public. I am very public. There's there's a lot of material for people to draw from, but still, like they don't see me cleaning up my dog's shit in the backyard. <laughs> like that's me. Well, you know, you that's are you. The, You're the whole of you. Yeah, the Whenever whole. Whenever someone tries to, and even like. I, you know, I have friends that have done stupid shit, and someone said that guy's a piece of shit. I'm like, no, he's not. He did a piece of shit thing right. one time. Like, he who did, hasn't? But who do, among us? Yeah, don't tell me he's <laughs> not a good guy. I've right. known him for fucking twenty years. I love him to death. Like, yeah, people are not a, a thing, a one thing. There are a bunch of things, and the problem with like some like internet interaction is so incredibly limited because whether it's through Twitter feeds or or blog posts or whatever it is, it's it's a shit way. To, to get the whole picture across, especially when you're defining a person. Right? Yeah. If you, or, or discussing a subject. Like, it's a good way to get your thoughts across at that very moment. Yeah. But if you're a, per, if, like, if you want to tell me that vaccines cause all these fucking horrible diseases, and I'm like, okay, we, we hold up, stop. Uh, let's get some scientists in here. Yeah. Let's let's get some people. Let's have a fucking four hour discussion about this, and let's bring up peer reviewed studies. Yeah. Let's find out what the fuck is going on. You know, can veganism really cure diabetes and cancer? And is is all that shit really caused by meat? Well, hold on. Let's get some scientists in yeah. here. Let's talk. Let's talk to people that have actually reviewed the data because there's so many goddamn documentaries and so many goddamn videos. I know. To tell you, and you're like, you oh can my God. find anything yes. to confirm anything, anything. you want to believe. Anything. That's the craziest yes. thing. And there's it, and there's no check on that belief if you've decided it is truly confirmation bias yes. you're like here's what i believe and now i'm going to seek out things to confirm that you should be seeking out things to debunk that belief yes if you're uh, trying to be intellectually honest right but most people it's not even really in our wiring to want to do that we just want to be right yeah. <laughs> you know we want to be no i have some friends that believe every fucking conspiracy theory that comes on the pipe and, I and always conspiracy send them, theories are fun i always send them debunking things they get mad at me you're like, no, that's not. It's but it's so easy to go down that it, it's it is a weird um you we all kind of become like two dimensional abstractions online. Yes. So I had friends that I waited tables with. And then what happened to me kind of getting caught in the crossfire of the culture wars is that I just noticed I wasn't saying things that I wanted to say. And I was like, why aren't I tweeting these things? It was weird to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, huh, that's weird. Why am I self-censoring? And then I realized because it was... And then once I started saying those things, I was like, oh, this is why I'm not saying yeah, these things. Yeah, you don't want to get in the war. But I didn't even know the war was going on. The war's always going on. I was an idiot. The I was drunk and waitressing, and I put my head up in 2015 <laughs> and was like, there's a war? <laughs> like, like, what's when people are around? expressing controversial, opinion, uh, controversial opinions, there's always a war. And you know, on the, the flip side of it, there's certain but people that want to believe the, the official story about everything, and they're just as annoying as the people that want to believe every conspiracy. I was not aware that the war included controversial opinions like boys and girls are different like oh, yeah. i didn't know that the thing had gone the war had new rules and so and michael malice always gives me shit like when i was on his podcast because i've been doing all this when you start kind of speaking out against the left you end up on right wing media because right. they're the only people who will have a conversation with you Isn't and so crazy now? yeah it's crazy so i go on like glenn beck and i'm like did you know that the left has different <laughs> rules for themselves and he's like yeah no shit bro. <laughs> like yeah we we, we knew that. <laughs> like We've been aware of this. And I'm just like this moron who's like, can you believe these well, double you're standards? Not <laughs> deeply entrenched in that culture war, you wouldn't understand how far it's gone. And I was like literally just getting high, waiting tables, trying to make jokes, trying to maybe get some of that TV money, sell a show, and and like trying to pay my bills every single month this past february is <laughs> the first time since i was 17 that i knew how i was going to pay two months of bills like that's a long time to Congratulations. be thank you yeah I, I, I have some friends that are blissfully unaware and occasionally i'll send them things like i have a friend of mine and i was sending this uh article about uh all these different track and field events that are being won by men now oh god men and they have no idea as women <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, men that identify as women, but do you know that like in some places you don't even have to take hormones? All you have to do is identify. Oh, no way. Oh, yes way. Yes. That's yeah. crazy. Particularly like high school kids. Like you can't force them to take hormones. 
all they have to do is identify as a, as a woman. I yeah, can't. it's different everywhere because so, no one knows what the fuck is going on. So there's all these different rules everywhere you go. I was getting my eyebrows done and my the woman who does my eyebrows is Vietnamese. And she was telling me that her kids got their ears pierced. And she's like, oh, I went and like my the kids, they got their ears pierced. And my daughter, who's not 16 yet, wanted one in the like ear, top of her earlobe. And the guy was like, oh, no, she has to be 16 to do that. And I was like, yeah, yet she can take hormones like. Oh, how the, the youngest of kids. I, mean, I was like, the, the this is the blockers. stupidest state ever. <laughs> like, I was reading an article about this guy who's losing custody of his son because he wouldn't let his son transition at six. What? His son went to his wife and the wife and him split up and the wife wanted to chemically castrate the boy and give him hormone blockers because she had decided that the boy was a girl, whether or not the boy had decided or not. Still, we're talking about a young, young yeah. kid. And the guy was being ordered by the state that he had to refer In to California? the boy. I don't believe it was California. He had to re- refer to the boy as a girl. And he had to, and he, he was going to have only supervised custody <laughs> now because he wasn't referring to, he was not allowed to misgender his son. His son was no longer a I son. Can't. His son was now a girl. Well, here's the thing about all that shit. It's like no one wants to fight against the mob of the left, but no one, there's no established science on any of this stuff, and everyone's different. I mean, it, are right. there people that are trans? Yeah, for sure. Of course. Are, are there young people that know that they are a girl from the time that they're young and they're in, trapped in a boy's body? I, there's so many of them that say they are. I would be an asshole to deny that. Right. But how, how, what do we know about this? How much do we know about this? And how much should we interfere with their hormonal, hormonal development? Well, it's so important to like brain functioning, well, not, isn't it? Well, not <laughs> just that. Not just that. A and lot brain of them, development. And don't you change your... A lot of them become your... gay men. If you, right. If you leave them alone, they just become gay men. Uh, There's a lot you of You know, them. I've seen this online. There's yes. like a lot of pushback from some communities saying that it's very um, anti-woman and homophobic. That a lot of these things are kind of a ra- it's like just uh, well, what's anti woman is the competition. Well, that the and and also just like I can't you know sometimes you'll see examples of um, women can't talk about their periods or something because it makes like a trans woman feel bad or if yeah. you you know so there's this erasure of like y- me being able to talk about something because it it's it, it's like. That's weird to me too. I should be able to talk about my experience as a woman and not no, you worry. Can't. You're you're ruining the experience for trans people. But see that stop. <laughs> Just stop. It's all about compliance. I mean, that's what most of this is about. All these nutbags that are tweeting, <laughs> the, the ones that I follow that are tweeting 12 hours a day. It's about compliance. I mean, most of what they're doing is trying to get. There's one that I tweeted the other day, um, over and over and over again in all caps. She wrote. Any gender can have their period. Any gender can yeah, have no, their period. Yeah, no, I'm not Any playing. I'm not can... playing this game. This is where I draw the line. I know that we just got demonetized, but <laughs> like, no, we're demonetized as fuck. As soon I'm, as I said cunt, it was over. Oh, <laughs> I'm not. I I can't. There. That's the thing. I'm like, do whatever you fucking want. I wanted to be a turtle when I was like six. You a know, real turtle or a, a ninja real turtle? turtle. Like live in the sewer. Like turtle? live in the, no. Not all no. turtles live in sewers. I wanted to be like a sea a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're like like a ninja turtle. No, I wanted to be like a turtle in mm. the Bahamas. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a difference between a turtle and a tortoise until I was thirty. Oh, I know. I don't. I don't think I was I aware it was of that. Just a different name for turtles. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much a, we don't a know. A ground turtle and a water turtle. They're all fucking turtles. I don't know anything really. And yeah. So that's the beauty. Which I, ones lived like hundreds of years? Is tortoise? it turtles or sea turtles? Do too though. Oh, I think so. Yeah. But there's tortoises in Joshua Tree. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, Did you ever run into I think one? they're tor- yeah, they're tortoises. You know yeah, what I've seen there them. For? They tag. I want to be a ranger in Joshua Tree. They're there for when you're tripping. Like, give you something. That's to why look they're at. there. You're like, what the fuck? God it's put them there. Yeah, just it's like so nature's, you can, <laughs> nature's nature's little, uh, little like little artifact. treat. <laughs> it's an artifact. So when, when you're tripping, you can. How many people have tripped in Joshua Tree versus not tripped in Joshua Tree? I don't I know. Bet it's like thirty seventy. <laughs> Trip versus not trip. I feel like I go enough to kind of offset. I go sober a lot now. <laughs> yeah. Like once a quarter. So I'm offsetting those numbers. Do you ever do anything like isolation tank? Do you ever do that? I've always wanted to. Well, I have one here if you want to do it. Yeah, yeah I do. do I've always wanted to do that. Um, I do. I, I, I want to kind of go back and say like I don't want to disparage therapy. I think it does help a lot of people. 
Um, it definitely has helped me. Well, and I think therapy is like comedy. There's good therapy, yeah, and there's terrible therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and by the way, certain personality types really are kind of untreatable. So if mm. if you have like narcissistic personality disorder oh, yeah. my yeah. therapist like the dirty secret is we'll kind of like pass them off to someone else or something because it, once you realize somebody can't see it they're wrong they they won't really well i talked to a therapist that, about that and they said some therapy doesn't work because all these people are really there for us to talk about themselves yeah 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 my and, therapist is uh kind of calls me out on shit oh so i like her my That's friends good. who have overheard overheard us uh, because we facetime she because she's a holdover from the east coast um, she, they're like, it sounds like she's your friend and she's being kind of like hard on you, but I, I need that. I need yeah. somebody who's gonna, um, I, I don't necessarily always, it was interesting. I just learned this past week that when you've had trauma, one of the kind of byproducts is that not only do you not trust people, but you don't trust yourself. And of I was course, like, oh, yeah. I didn't yourself, know this. You put yourself in a bad situation, right? So you don't trust your own and judgment. And often, like, your reaction to it. Mm. So my reaction to what happened to me was very, I mean, yes, I was young and I can, f- can forgive myself for that. But it was to, I was, like, hypersexual after that. You know, I, mm. I and then I, I recently, last week, had this moment where I was like, oh, God, all the, like, men that just didn't deserve me. And this is one of the... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I it really was like I felt like I was re-virginized or something. I don't know what mm. happened, but I suddenly was like, "Wow, I I I don't." I suddenly have self worth. <laughs> like, it and it took me a long time. For you too, well, right? this is one of the you know where I'm squishy. I'm squishy on a lot of things, and um, I think feminism is really important. And to like shit on it is there are women who died and got jailed for like the right to vote so that doesn't sit well with me but the some of the excesses of feminism and of the in particular um like sexual liberation is that i was told sex is empowering and it's not fucking empowering if you're not empowered already like in my experience you were told sex is empowering as a it's part kind of feminism of, you? well is it's kind of the messaging is like you know women can have sex too and just like it's a, like it's an empowering well, it's, isn't thing isn't more of an anti-shame thing because like well, women are shamed for their their their, their yeah, feelings yeah and I think and that's why I think the I understand it I understand why that would be the but I feel like what got lost is that sex is very intimate and for years I was like intimacy is so creepy I just <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't make eye, like eye contact. No, no, right. we're not doing that. Yes. That's not <laughs> happening. And uh, it's, I, I yeah, just, like, yeah, like <laughs> get in the back. Um, uh, we, get in the back. <laughs> we, I just didn't have that. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I, I missed the memo that it should be something. I, I was taught that it was. Um, you know, like to kind of withhold because then a man won't respect you, which feels a little bit transactional. So there's that messaging. And then there's mm. messaging of like, free the nipple and be empowered. And like, you can have sex with whoever you want. But if you have trauma and you're not really great on the self-esteem department, and then you start trying to sleep your way to empowerment, it's only going to create, in my experience for me, it created a lot more shame and a vicious cycle mm. that was like very connected to addiction for me too. Sleeping your way to empowerment is a funny concept. Well, suck and fuck your way to enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and I know I can already I can, you know, the uh, problem with my brain is that I can I'm always like contradicting myself. So I well, can That's because life is complicated. Yeah. I mean, and it's not it's not binary. Like sex is good or sex is bad. Like there's different situations yeah. where it's good and dif- different situations where it's terrible for you. Yeah, and it's just the whole weird writing for Playboy at so to ask me you asked me when I started writing. I always wrote. I wrote that piece Bill Cosby wrote me kind of. <laughs> Um, that That's a great title. Thank you. Um, and then I ended up, uh, Twitter was really how I got every connection in the writing world. I started, somebody hooked me up with an editor from Playboy and there was this piece going around. <laughs> 
that was like, um, why I don't suck dick. And I'm like, well, someone needs to stick up for sucking dick, and that person needs to be me. <laughs> and so I pitched to Playboy, like, in defense of, of, of why I love giving blowjobs, basically. And um, I didn't know, again, because I'm like a child of the 90s who was just high, I didn't get the memo that now a lot of that is seen as like internalizing the patriarchy. What? Uh, Wait like, a minute. What is? Literally. <laughs> what about eating um, pussy? What is that? Not eating pussy. Sucking but dick. Okay? But, but, but how does that work? Oh, that's okay. But it's only okay. Sucking dick is internalizing well, the patriarchy because ca- you take it into your body? Well, no. Just some, some went, the whole point of like the not why I don't suck dick is that it's like, it's a degrading experience, which it can feel that way. And um, I but was saying. Everything can feel degrading right, sexually. But, and it's not, it's not a, um, it's not this or that. You know, like sexuality is so fucking complicated. That's why I loved writing for Playboy because it is everything. It is shame and fear and intimacy and love and passion and all of it. Like it all happens in sex and in those messy relationships and the whole consent culture thing, which there again, like there are good things that come of it. But then there's another thing where part of it where I'm like, how are we going to hack? Something is awkward as sexuality when you're, especially when you're like in, and your hormones and your... Well, it's, again, it comes down to compliance. I mean, that's yeah. what the whole consent culture is about. I mean, c- look, consent is imperative. It's important. It's everything, of right? Course. You don't want anybody doing anything without your consent. However, this idea that you should ask for consent before every single step of the way, can I touch your left, left leg? Right. Yes. Can I touch your ass? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> you ever see that video? No. This is a great video. It was like they're teaching <laughs> consent. It's a, this consent can be hot. And it's like this guy it's, and this girl kissing. And the guy and the girl, the, the guy's like, can I kiss you? She's like, yes. Can I touch your shoulder? Yes. Like, and like he has to say it every step of the way. He's at, but it's always the guy. But it's explicit too. Right, but it's, it's always not... the guy. The girls, ne- can I suck your dick? Of course. You don't have to ask questions. There's like the idea that the girl has to ask is ridiculous, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you have a video where the girl's asking the guy, everybody's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? What is she, a sex <laughs> robot? She's asking if she can fuck you? That is crazy. Can you put it inside me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like no one does. No one does that. Has anybody ever said that ever? Like, yeah. The, the asking the guy for consent is r- so, one of the most ridiculous ideas ever. If you're making out, that's consent. Well, be, and this is the difference between explicit and implicit. And there's right. so much a consent that occurs that's implicit, and that's some of the sexiest stuff. Right. It's right. The, you don't like, have to talk about it. Yeah. It's yeah. The, and it's learning to read that body language and read the like. Eh, but she's you know people that want compliance. That's what it is. It's, but it's, it's who are weird, these people? Crazy people that have no life. <laughs> <laughs> and they're on Twitter all day. The, it's a, the power trip thing. What they're trying to do is get people to bend their behavior and change it to their will. But why? Because they're nuts. Because they enjoy power tripping. Right. Like why do people? Why are people saying stop using guys? Stop saying guys. Stop using gendered language. You ever see that video? Which one? Where they're, they're speaking the, in front of the socialists. Oh, the I was going to say that to you. I, like point permission. Of <laughs> per, point, per, point, point of, of personal, personal privilege. Privilege. <laughs> Yeah, I, I made fun of it on Dumpster Fire. That fucking video is amazing. Yeah. But when the guy, guys, can you just stop with the chatter? Because I, I have a really hard time paying attention. I have severe yeah, ADHD. Yeah, like the, the like yeah. jazz and then, hands. And then the, the guy who's like the trans woman gets up and says, please stop saying guys. Stop using gendered language. Like, oh my God, I saw, we're in a movie. No, a it's movie. insane. Reality has become parody. I, I was watching someone was saying like, please stop using the masculine and it had like thousands of retweets and it was like please stop using um, male and female the binary needs I'm like no (laughs) well you know Todd Phillips who directed the Joker (laughs) yeah one of the things that he said and he was talking about he said he's really difficult right now to do comedy right you know it's just like a a, a, he's doing an interview they're like why are you doing this like really dark superhero movie this dark action movie like he's like wow fucking hard to do comedy these days I mean you know, you guys don't understand that this and that. So he used the term "you guys," and one of the reporters that criticized it was calling, you know, say Todd Phillips is a, a piece of shit, and look how he uses the term "guys." <laughs> like the one Why? of the points, the main points this person made was that he was using the term "you guys." Like that, guys. Because everything the, is the patriarchy. Like what? It's gendered language. 
<sighs> but know, it, it's but it's also just shit. like language. Yes. You know, that's the and and this well, was, women use it all the time. I use it all the time. I use retard all the time. It just Ooh. it's I know it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> but it's not bad. Here's the thing it's about from it. Being it's being on the East Coast though. It is, but it's also it has nothing to do with the disease. This no. is what the problem is. It has to do with people literally being retarded. Like, like retarded, like slowing down the progress. Yeah, I know. Like a person who thinks the earth is flat. That is a retarded way of looking at the world. Yeah. And if you make <laughs> videos about it, you're slowing down scientific progress if people get caught up in your I'm rabbit hole. I'm glad that we're mutually right? going to be canceled together. <laughs> I'm hoping to get canceled. You keep trying. I'm trying. You're trying. So you're like South Park. <laughs> but this is what I think. I, I just, I think what what's going on right now is this like this chaotic period of adjustment <laughs> to our ability to communicate with each other openly and across the board and in this weird way through social media. Why are we responsible for everyone's feelings? We are not. But this is the world we live in. But you you are responsible by your language and jokes that you tell. You, if your jokes are offensive, you are responsible for literally every person's feelings in the audience. Not necessarily. Bridget, here's the thing. It's such a small number of people. Yeah. And they're so loud. This is what we saw with the Chappelle special. Yeah. Right? Right, Chappelle, right, right. right. The Rotten Tomatoes. Reviewed by Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> they decided for whatever fucking goofy reason to re make it reviewed by five super woke critics. They gave it a zero percent. Right. They open it up to the public. It gets a 100% rating. Right. 100%. They're like, thank God. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Everybody the, else says it's awesome, and they're going to like it more because they don't like you assholes that say it's zero percent. Well, and the critical theory guys, you know, like James Lindsay, you've had them yes, on. Yes. Um, they're great. But... There, the whole idea. Oh, it's so ninety nine percent and thirty five percent. Yeah. Hey, at least the tomato meter went up a little bit with the critics. Yeah. Up to 35 the critics percent. jumped the in. It says it won't uh, elicit many laughs either. This is like, <laughs> oh my god, edgy but empty. Sticks and stones won't break any bones, and it won't elicit many laughs. Either. I, I mean, this was it. it I don't know. It's, it's James Lindsay it's just a, posted something today. He just he just posted something today that just said, oh my. Oh, it's about diversity in in medical N institutions, and that they think that uh, people who are at the head of of uh, m medical institutions they should have tenure because we we by this it would take fifty years. Like some some woman posted this thing, like forget about competence. This is there. Here it is. What does it say? Diversity leadership, diversified leadership, uh, researchers say term limits may create more opportunities for women and minorities in academic medicine. Hmm. Like term limits, like forget about how competent you are at brain surgery. What we need <laughs> is more brown women in your part, doing it's, your part. It's, so we're going to teach them how to be brain surgeons. So what I've learned from them is just that it's it truly behaves like a religion. Yes. So like wokeism. Yes. And this is the piece that I was writing. I, I think I quoted you and um, Bill Burr and just I was saying like comedy's last stand and about Ch around Chappelle and how his the his special, whether he meant to do it or not, goes like right after every single one of their tenants you yes. know it, almost like strategically he goes after every and i was saying everyone's like oh it's reactionary it's reactionary i'm like no they're fighting yes. <laughs> like, they're not reacting they're fighting back well that rotten tomatoes is the that's the battleground right that shows you like this is the ideological battleground right it's very small number of woke people versus the vast majority of people that don't turn to comedy to have reality defined for them they right. turn to it to laugh right these people they want relief th these people are trying to define reality through all forms of art and they're doing it by again trying to get people to comply with their very rigid terms of what you can say the way you can think whether you're punching down or punching up on how you treat people and how you treat minorities and trans people and i just get to the like why why i mean why it's a power trip i understand but what because i don't i like to give people the benefit of the doubt and so i know that they wake up and think and that's the weird thing about the time that we live in right now is that literally everyone on all sides thinks they're on the right side of history yes. <laughs> <laughs>
And I was, yeah. and you and I were talking about this like the it, before we were how weird like Trump derangement syndrome is, where it definitely exists on the left, and there's like the craziness and the people who can literally see all day long. They're online tweeting about Trump. I'm like, what do you? How do you feed your children? They're, I imagine they have starving children just waiting for like dinner. And then on the right, you see it with like he can do no wrong. So it's like these the MAGA and resistance yeah. strains of of Trump derangements and and it's and it's so it's like most people don't live in there in either one but they seem to have the loudest platforms but that's there you know most people are like left and the right the further you go left the further you go right they kind of just like together they get together because it's an they ideological the same. thing. They do. When I was getting attacked, so working at Playboy, you retweeted it actually, and it was why. And it, you pr- had no idea, but it was I wrote, um, "Women date assholes because you're a pussy." That was like the first column, and they were testing me to do a column, and you just so happened to retweet it, so you probably got me that job. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, and th- I didn't realize because I got attacked by like all the. The like dudes on the right who were like uh, kind of beta dudes, and they were like, "I'm not a pussy. I'm a good guy." And then, um, <laughs> and then there were all the people on on the left, the like radical feminists, and they were like, "You can't. You know, this is toxic masculinity." And I was like, "What the fuck is happening? Like, <laughs> you guys sound exactly the same. Do you yes. re- you should date. I figured out." <laughs> How to solve the problem. Uh, well, I always think it's hilarious when a right-wing person and a Democrat date. Oh. The, the, How do you make that work? Just, Maybe it's just like hate fucking. Yeah, hate fucking. You know? <laughs> like, fuck Nancy like, Pelosi. No, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sure. I mean, look, people are goddamn complicated. We are. We're yeah. very complicated. It's not, oh. That's what was so weird about working at Playboy was I got there right when they went non-nude. Mm. And I was oh, like, that's hilarious. How sorry, will, everyone. How long did that last? <laughs> like one minute. <laughs> it was like somebody on I Twitter thinks episodes. that it was like McDonald's being like, we're not serving fries anymore. Sorry, guys. It was like new Coke. Like what? Yeah. Why would you fuck with Coke? So that was a weird time. And then it was a lot of transition, but just writing for men, waking up to the fact that there was this culture war and then writing for men at a time when it was like anti-men. Right. I didn't realize that had happened either. I was like still singing, this is a man's world, like in my mind. And then suddenly I was like, oh, <laughs> there's a there's a, there's a a sex war going on too. <laughs> well, I got the idea behind Me Too. Like I was also sexually abused. Me Too. I didn't get the times up. Like t- the, uh, the thing of times up. Times up for what? Like what is the time up for? Why do we like, have to use me up? too? It's such a common phrase. Like it's so weird when a I guy know. is like, "I can't wait to see you," and I'm always like, "Hashtag me too." I you do know? that all the time. Yeah. And people go, "LOL." Because yeah. now it's become a joke. Yeah. And well, I well, th- there's been enough Asia Argentos and enough you know hypocrites, enough of the crazy ones. But it is important, you know, yes. because I mean, circling back to what happened to me last week and in my young like childhood it's important that these the you know i see that woman that i that the 19 year old as my hero but also the culture is more supportive of her going and yes. saying something and it was not 20 years ago at all so that is progress yeah. you know no, that's definitely progress yeah there's that de- but progress is not clean no progress comes in these it's waves, so messy. knocks rocks over, and yeah. knocks over pylons, and and then everybody rebuilds, and then mm-hmm. we figure out where the fuck the ocean line is now. You know, the shoreline moves, everything moves. But and- that's been the weird thing is that I, it's I I you know I was joking the other day that I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes something will happen with Trump, and I'll be like, all right, that's it. You know, like sign me up for the resistance. I'm going to be marching in the streets. It's in the streets in the minute. They're like, uh, yeah. And what's your gender? I'd be like, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, what are your pronouns? <laughs> I'm out. Forget it. <laughs> like, My name is Bridget. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I'm not joining you either. <laughs> like uh, they put, them. I'm a they them. I'm just out. I'm out. <sighs> they them. I have a friend whose daughter's th- a they. She calls herself they. I'm like, okay. Well, I would be, you know, okay. that's the other thing too is that you you latch onto these things when you're a kid. Of course. You're totally going to be ripe for having that happen to you. Oh, for sure. You know, you're going to have like two they thems. <laughs> <laughs> 
Babies. They call them babies. Babies. People are ra- raising their kids as babies. And I just say, let them decide what they are. No. I don't push them in any one way or far. Ah, These kids are going to be so ah, fucked up. <laughs> it's like a fucking Disney ride. That was the weird thing when I was working on the... This is also another weird moment I'm having right now because I listened to so much of your podcast when I was trimming weed. And anyone who's trimmed weed knows you do it for like 13 hours at a clip and go crazy. And... Somewhere in an alternate timeline, I'm trimming weed listening to me. <laughs> uh, on your, but That's this, hilarious. This was all that, that whole culture. And it's so funny because the way those kids revolt, like the way they rebel, all the like hippie kids who grew up with like their parents on acid, losing them at, you know, festivals and shit. And the Bernie Man kids. Like one of my friends, she joined the army. I'm like, yeah, this is what happens. That's how they rebel. The kids that grew up with all this crazy shit, they're like, yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm joining the D fucking A, mom. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. That is what happens. I'm People gonna get, go like, get super a suit. religious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If your parents are drug addicts, you become sober and a marathon runner. Yeah, yeah, that uh-huh. happens. It's yeah. just like, so your kids are gonna be yeah. like, you know. It's well, they, Dad. I'm pretty good at not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I let them do what they want to do. I'm not like. I'm not that rigid. Yeah. I mean, I, I have like rules and stuff, but I, there's also a lot of communication in my house. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I mean, I know what the fuck happened when I was a kid, mm. so I, I try real hard to not make any of that happen to them. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of talk. Did, were you like uh, come from a crazy upbringing? It was crazy. It wasn't bad. They were nice, but they were distant, mm. absent. It was mm-hmm. more absent, but they were working. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was a latchkey kid. My, yeah. <laughs> my, when I was a kid, my parents had worked all the day. Yeah. You know, and then when they got home, I was going to martial arts. Yeah. So I was, yeah. Ne- I was never around my parents. At least you had martial arts. Yeah, that you was probably would have been a freaking hooligan. Oh my God. That saved me. From the time I was 14 till the time I stopped fighting, that saved me. Wow. 100%. Because that gave me structure. Yeah, yeah. I had no structure. And it teaches you self self discipline. Yeah. It teaches you to respect the whole idea of discipline. That's what I love about Jack. Oh, the whole discipline yes. equals freedom. J- discipline equals freedom is fucking hilarious. Did you, did you see the uh, post? My wife put up a post of Marshall with a uh, with a, a watch on. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> four thirty, four o'clock in the morning. I go, love go it. He's some. so inspiring yeah. though that way because he just. I want to see. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> get that's after amazing. It today. <laughs> <laughs> I love the watch so too. Fucking silly. I'm always so like, is that blood silly. or is it sweat? Sweat, mostly okay. with, Mar- with um, Jocko. <laughs> He's a fucking savage. He's like, amazing. Jocko really does get up every fucking morning at 4.30 and works out like a beast. But I think there are some men where, like, they should, you they know. should do that. Well, we should be, they're just, like, born warriors. And in this society where there's not really... It's yeah. so kind of easy, and it's not like they're. It's what, what do you do? Yeah. And as we were talking about, I think a lot of that energy of like the negativity. I always say to people online, I'm like, go build something because I know from my own experience that if I'm, if I'm not using that energy creatively, I'll self destruct. Right. It, it's like it goes inward, or I'll project it outward, and I'll tear people down, or whatever. Be, well, that's what you, you see. And, yeah. Right? So you go see build something. To tear people down go instead. make something. Attack. All the time. <laughs> it's yeah. so much of an attack culture. Yeah. Well, discipline is a very important part of being a healthy person, and 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 for men, I think there's a certain amount of energy that you must expand. You must expand yeah. it. You must you must blow it out of your system. Yeah, and this is actually why I'm very grateful. And again, for you and your platform, because I know from writing for Playboy, I would hear, I would say, "Hey guys, what do you think about going bald?" And I would get these like long letters from men. Who had never been asked, like, hey, how are you doing, dude? And they would tell me these stories of, like, what it was like to lose their hair or what it's like for to have ED or whatever. And it, it there was not really a space for, um, in in this culture war, there's not, the, the male magazines have been kind of taken over by the, there's not really a space for men to just be men. The Ma- only space is podcasts. 
It is. And, no and one you, tells you give, what to do. but you give these guys a voice and for all the shit you get, you, I feel like you use it responsibly for them. You could be up here being like, go cause a lot of chaos guys and like go get whatever. And you're trying to, you know, better yourself and therefore help other people to better themselves and ask questions. And like, it's not like you're up here. You could be doing a, a lot of bad shit with this. <laughs> You'd be wielding this weapon like, you know, you could run for president. Oh, God. Let's do it. No, that's never <laughs> happening. But, yeah, I think that there's very few legitimate outlets for mm-hmm. men because everyone has to be – you have to go through the filter of executives and producers and all that. If you're going to put something out there, like a, some sort of an entertainment product, it has to be filtered by the network. It has to be filtered right. by all these other voices. And if they want to keep their fucking job, they're not going to let you just be yourself. Right. There's no way. They're mm-hmm. going to try to mold you. They're going to try, what about the diversity? Mm-hmm. You know, what you need is a girl sidekick to balance you out because everything you're doing is so masculine and people are going to be really turned off by it. And what about girl voices? You know, I can't believe you two guys are on there and you, you know, you're talking about gay rights and there's no gay people in the room. You need a gay person. <laughs> and then next thing you know, I got this fucking, this woke round table <laughs> and, it, and it's a goddamn disaster. And men, again, they don't, look. I have no problem with anybody saying, like, you can, if you have a podcast and you're a guy and you just love Take It In The Ass, go do a podcast called Take It In The Ass. <laughs> have a good time. Yeah. That's you. But and if there's no one filtering you and no one stopping you, you can really uh, accurately reflect who you are. You can ac- accurately project who you are. Yeah. But if you're a man, just a regular man who likes manly shit, do you like <laughs> do you like hot rods? Do you do you like fights? Do you do you like tits? Do you yeah, like these things? Yeah. Well, then you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Okay. And in this day and age, if you have that these these normal male desires, yeah. which fucking every male has, <laughs> everyone. Yeah. They can't call it toxic man- masculinity when every man has it. There's no outlet. Yeah, yeah. Because everyone has to, the everything has to be filtered through an executive or a director or And a then network. what shadow does that create? So every time, you know, what you resist persists, what you repress creates a dark shadow. So when you're taking all of this masculine energy and you're constantly beating men over the head with how bad they are, it's not going anywhere. Now it's just going underground and it's going to leak out in weird fucking ways yes. because they're not allowed to express themselves. And the problem, I, I see this all the time, is like, oh, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, let men be men, let men share their feelings. And then it's like they do and they're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Well, they don't Shut say the let fuck men up, be men. Down. They want men to change. They want men to adjust. And they want men to... Look, you can be a really good person and also be a man. Uh, and yeah, actually and, a manly man. Uh, yeah, but and I think... But they don't think that you can. They think that you have to evolve and change because the men that are a part of that are all pussies. <laughs> and there's a lot of those guys out there. There's a lot of those guys out there this... that don't like manly men. And they want to think there's something wrong with someone like Jocko. There's something wrong with a guy who likes hot rods and tits. And there's like, nothing wrong with a guy who's not a manly man either. No, like, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, but there's room for us all. But they're competing. Right, right, like right, every right. Every male feminist is competing. I right? saw somebody with like a cis head or bubble, and I was like, oh, you're a woke dude trying to get laid. Yes. <laughs> like, whenever I see that in a cis heteronormative, I'm like, okay, so you're just a. Dr- that's all. That's all they have, but they have to do that. Like I had a bit that I was doing about male feminists. I go, they don't exist. Find me a male feminist that can pick up heavy shit and run fast. <laughs> They're not real. They're not real. You know who the like- meanest people have been to me online, other than like incels and um, radical feminists? Blue checked liberal dudes. Like some of the the like the like allies, they're the people who have come the hardest at me and been the most cruel to me. About what? They're just always on my nuts about something. On your nuts? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Yeah, you can say it. We'll let you. <laughs> I got nuts. It's like today. a white person using the N word. <laughs> Oh, that's that's gonna go over well. <laughs> that's exactly what it's like. What are they getting after you about? Um, what was the last one? You know, I I I think I said something about like Tulsi being, you know, how they're like, oh, she's a foreign ass, and everybody's like, you're a fucking idiot, and and they they just, I as I kind of started just speaking my mind, and the weird fucking hard thing about being a feisty comedian. And somebody that sometimes writes more serious pieces is that I get to, I, I don't mean to, but 
I dance out line of like, it kind of cracks me up when people get all outraged. Yes, of course. <laughs> like, it kind of makes me laugh. It's and fun. I, I can't help the comic in me is like, that's my, I'm supposed to be pushing the envelope and buttons and I, you know, the free speech stuff, I will die on that hill. That is literally That's a hill, hill I will die, die on. That's the hill to die on. And that is when I say, when I see these, like, the the the, the sides going, I'm like, okay, yeah, we got to push against some of the corruption, and this is getting bad over here. And then I'm like, whoa, okay, this is authoritarian and insane, and you can't say anything. But and these, so many of these woke left dudes are mush. They're mushy. <laughs> They're made out of mush. Like, come run a hill. You're made out of mush. Do a deadlift. That was one of You're my. You're made out of mush. <laughs> that was one of my favorite Bill Burr routines ever of the guy screaming on the plane, where he's like, ah! and he's like, "That is a scream that should come from a woman or a child." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "No grown man should ever have that coming out." And he's like, "That's like if the an-, and he was talking about how animals would be like, stay away from that one, Lindsay." <laughs> oh God. Because it, it is. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I was thinking about it. I'm like, I don't think I've ever dated a liberal dude. Never? <laughs> because they're they're I don't know. I don't think so. I don't not in the not recently because I like my men masculine. But you can be masculine and also be liberal. I'm pretty liberal. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. I know. I, I'm not saying that I you can be masculine and liberal. I, I it just, just doesn't happen that often. <laughs> I think they're all taken. <laughs> they're like snatched up pretty quick <laughs> by the liberal women who Golden are like, eggs. I see one. He's a unicorn. Yeah. Um it's well, and I think too, we come from a different generation. So that it's more of a struggle maybe now than it was like back it's when being you got married. Now. Like, yeah, yeah, men yeah. I think there's something wrong with it now. Which is not good. It's so crazy. No, no, no. It's it's, and I think most women, uh, many women, um, I I'm feisty and I opinionated. Like I can't have a guy who's not gonna mush. put me in my mush. place. <laughs> Someone yeah. is mush. I can't have a man yeah. who's gonna just let me walk all over them because I will. <laughs> yeah, it's normal. It's natural. I mean, and no one wants that. Well, th- I think there's a natural inclination that certain women have with weak men to push them around. I think mm. it's normal. I think you, you're, you're testing the boundaries of what you can get away with and not get away with communicating with each other. Well, and it's also the whole like concept of nice guy. It's like, well, you're not a nice guy. You just were trying to backdoor your way into dating me by being a friend, and it's manipulative. Jordan Peterson <laughs> talks about that. Jordan P- Peterson says that you, you don't want to be a nice guy. You want to be a dangerous person. Who's okay. nice? <laughs> a dangerously a nice dang- person. No, a dangerous person who is nice. Mm-hmm. But just just being a nice person all the time, like you're, you have to be nice. Like you're nice because you have no choice. A dang, you want to be a dangerous person who chooses to be nice. Mm. There is a big difference. That's interesting. Because you have a choice to be nice or to not be nice. And I want a dangerous person when the shit hits the fan. Yeah. I Everybody does. I don't want some. Everybody does. You want a dangerous woman too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want someone who can g- figure it out. Yeah. And you don't want mush. Mush. People are made out of mush. Do you think that we're making more mush? Yes. Yes. <laughs> if there's anything I think in this life that is unfucking bendable, it's that we are making more mush. And how do you, how do you think that we, helpfully and not you know I find that I do what I did as a child, which is. Shame the mush. <laughs> you well, I know? think you went through a, a whole fucking litany of chaotic events that shaped you, and you had terrible things happen to you, and you learned from them, and then you became who you are today. But I don't want it. The, you don't my, have to do it that way. No, but my point is using how do how do I how do you inspire people who might be attracted by this kind of in, you know the, the reason I started my podcast is just so that people could tell stories of grit and resilience because I find that what happens is we'll start talking about the victimhood culture, but then it sounds like we're victims. Right. Of, and I don't want to do that either. I want to build something. Grit and resilience. Grit and resilience. But how do you, you know, I worry that these young minds are being indoctrinated. And this is what I always ask them. Like the women, in part- young w- women in particular or with like intersectionality, which seems like this race. I'm like, play the tape forward for me. Where does this lead? How does this lead to 
self-esteem? How does this lead to feelings of empowerment? I mean, my therapist and I talk about this all the time, how, how hard she's having, how hard a time she's having with the younger women because they're all coming in with this sense of perpetual victimhood mm. of everywhere you go. Like that, the, it's the patriarchy and it's everything is oppressing you. And, and how do, the whole yeah. idea of therapy is to get you out of feeling those, you know, going from maybe being victimized feeling like a victim to taking that and and being um, more empowered. I don't exactly know what you could say to young women because I've never gone through that experience. But for sure, for young men, they need something that's difficult. Yeah. Young men need difficult things in their life. Like like those out they need boundary waters or whatever yeah, that is. something, anything. Uh, for me, I always tell them jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Get involved in jujitsu. Because so, I don't... Getting involved in martial arts that involves striking is fucking dangerous because brain damage is for keeps. Right, right, You keep that shit for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so adamant about trying to get fighters to quit when I think they should quit. Mm -hmm. You know, when when they've hit this wall and they come to me for advice, and it's happened many times, I'm like, you got to stop. You got to stop. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Mm -hmm. Don't look for that fucking Mm -hmm. pot of gold at the end of the rainbow because you've already been knocked out four or five times. Mm -hmm. You got to stop. Yeah. Because if you don't stop, you're going to be a 60 year old person that shits their pants. Yeah, yeah. And your your wife's going to have to walk you to the car, and you're not going to know where you are in a supermarket. You're going to get lost. Like you, this is what happens. This is real. Mm-hmm. This is, so mm-hmm. striking, striking arts are very dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I think you got to know when to get off that fucking boat. Mm-hmm. You got to know. Mm-hmm. But grappling is a different animal. Yeah. Grappling, you could teach people jujitsu, and I, I, I went to jujitsu. With uh, a guy who was fucking 62 years old. Yeah. 62 years old, this guy. I was like, how old are you, man? He's like, 62. I'm like, holy shit. Purple belt. Yeah. 62. Going after it. Yeah. Trying hard. Trying yeah. to get his black belt. I'm like, good for you, man. Like, it was a fucking cool conversation. That, to me, is something that I would encourage young men to do because it's really difficult. And in the beginning, you feel hopeless. And then as you get better at it, you learn, oh, my God, with hard work and discipline, and I just fucking keep showing up, just keep showing up and figuring it out. I can get better at something. It's mm-hmm. a very difficult thing. I can use that as a vehicle for developing my human potential. And also, I realize that I can overcome struggle. Right. I can overcome these things. Right. I can overcome, and I can get better. And then also, the exertion of energy, the ex- just going out there and fucking exhausting yourself. You're more calm and peaceful. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other thing about jujitsu is your constant physical contact. Yeah, yeah. Like people need hugs. <laughs> they as weird do. as that sounds. But men need even j- j- hugging each other. It sounds like maybe gay or something like that. I don't care. But it's good. <laughs> it's not gay. It feels good to no, hug. It's, like it's, even though you're trying to kill each other, it's you're connection. touching each other. Yes, connection it's real. is important. And you need it's that real. brotherhood. Yes. You know, there, there's something about that um, camaraderie yes. that you have to have. There's a camaraderie that yeah. exists in jujitsu that's unlike any other camaraderie yeah. I've ever experienced because you're not you don't have the, there's a certain resentment from striking like if a guy beats my ass if I go spar with some guy and he beats my ass next time I see him I'm like I'm gonna fuck this dude up I'm like I'm, I don't like him that much he hurt me he gave yeah, me a headache yeah, yeah. like I went home I have a headache because I got hit me with a punch yeah. so I'm thinking I'm gonna fuck him up and like this is like what men do like in sparring and sparring oftentimes want, turns into fights mm. but in jujitsu, like you could choke me and arm bar we could choke each other and then afterwards it's all love right, it's all hugs right. and you clap hands and thanks man and people tell you how, how they caught you and they tell you you know oh, you, I almost tapped there dude mm. you almost had me in the guillotine and we'll laugh about it like I want to there's a um, really great class that I've been wanting to take and it's at Gracie and it's um, women's Gracie? empowerment but it's oh. all just like self defense the one in um, Beverly Hills okay cool um, but it's an amazing class I like sat in on it because I like it as a woman it feels like the most realistic you know I, I feel like I can actually use it and it for sure just Jiu-jitsu is the most realistic for women. Just to get away. Yes. You know, just to, in, in to the pre- event. To defend yourself. Yeah, to yeah. defend yourself just to get away. I'm not going to sit there right. and fight. I, but just give myself that window of an opportunity that I might, you know, just a chance, yes. a fighting chance. Because otherwise, you, you, yeah, no. Well, jujitsu is also something that someone who's a weaker person can effectively utilize on someone who's stronger than Right, them, right. Because it's so technique-based. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is, um, you know, one of the things I've learned from all the men who were writing into me a playboy is um jordan peterson has something that really speaks to these guys and you know i've seen him get a lot of of crap but like he has saved so many men that i know i mean these guys have written me letters like 
telling me so much and I'm not sure really what it is about his program or whatever what whatever it is that he's saying his message well he's concentrating on young men I mean, mm-hmm. that's a, and, mm-hmm. he, and he has this he's resonating with young men because is it discipline what is his what is his, what is his I mean, primary thing. he always talks about cleaning your room like clean right like, right, you're right. Talking make about your messy, bed messy mind messy cluttered room cluttered cluttered mind. Mind. Mm-hmm. yeah same thing i mean mm-hmm. he's essentially saying clean your room get your okay. shit together yeah and i mean there's there's so much to what he's saying that expands far beyond that as well. And, you know, his movies are getting, he says there's a documentary about him right now, The Rise of Jordan Peterson, and it's getting censored. Like, Why? These, these people are protesting it being in these theaters. They don't know. They think they're supposed to censor him. They think he's transphobic and homophobic and all these different things. But he's helped so many people. But, but you know his origin? Do you know what happened in Toronto? The no. Heat? Okay. There Not was really. There was a bill that was being passed. It was going to force you to use one of, you know, there's, this, this gender pronoun bill, mm-hmm. like say if you wanted to use one of the 78 different gender mm-hmm. pronouns, you would be obligated, mm-hmm. like legally obligated to use them. Oh. And he was protesting against that. It's like you're using compelled speech. Oh. You can't compel me. Legally. Canada does not have free speech. They do not have so a first amendment. So it wasn't amendment. that, that he didn't want to re- he it wasn't that he didn't want to use their preferred pronoun. It was that he didn't want to be compelled yes, to use legally it. Legally compelled. Oh, got it. Legally compelled. And he didn't want to use made up words either. Right. Like cuz there's Zer and Jim and all these different crazy made up words. Yeah. Like like you you want to be a they? You want to be a, a, a he or a she like like what are we doing here? Yeah, like, yeah. Who, what are you? Okay, <laughs> if you if you, you want me to call Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. Okay, I'll call her. Caitlyn. That's fine. You want me to say it's a her? Okay, I'll say it's a that's her. That's fine. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. But you want to start making up words, and that's where he's like, no. And you want to and legally you want to call compel. me a, and you want to call me a bigot for not right. letting my kid get hormones. Like this is where this is where or the sports thing I get yeah. very like outraged sports about. Thing is insane. It's insane. Get, there's there's a bunch of different schools that are letting kids compete in the gender that they identify with and those in those places those those women's track events are fucking dominated by men <laughs> dominated they're breaking world records what was that woman's name Rachel McKinnon she just broke the world's record for the cycling event and she's a, she used to be a man I mean all the and they're like you're a bigot if you don't agree with this no you broke the world's record <laughs> how'd that happen what is happening here? What's happening here is you're a guy. This is you're when I born a guy. This is when I feel like I'm in a simulation, and right, right. and there's somebody who's like, let's see how many people we can get to like get on board yeah. with this shit. Right. And then and I I and or I'm like maybe I'm just old. No. Maybe. <laughs> no. What's getting what's happening is women are getting fucked over. That's yeah. why this is the most crazy. I get it's called because, a turf a lot. But they're in the middle of this ideological battle. And mm-hmm. women are losing scholarships. They're they're losing their ability to compete with people of their own gender. This is or their own sex, their own whatever you want to call it, whatever the, the right. fucking chromosomes. The, when you start adding trans men and trans women into the mix, you're going to get two things. Depending upon the sport, the trans men are going to get fucking smoked. Period. <laughs> when when w- tra- when women transition to men and they want to be a man and compete with men, they're going to get fucked up. In almost every sport, particularly fighting. It Jesus, is funny how much it's Christ. gotten men talking about periods. <laughs> Has it? Like, it's just like, you know, I'll see men defending, like, a woman's right to talk about her period. I'm like, yes, that's right. What now man, you're a male feminist. What man has ever had a problem with women talking about their period? No, no, I Who know. Are but some, they're, they, they exist. They These get squeamish. Are, they're squeamish. That is so what? weak. I'm mushy. <laughs> that's mushy, man. Guys are scared of pussy blood. You're not scared of a bloody steak, but you're, you're scared of vagina blood. Yeah, they're. So they are sque- there are guys who are squeamish about it and there are so another one weird. shake them off the leaf <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> shake them off yeah Soft-headed. yeah there's there's a it is it does feel a banana i read something somewhere where it said you know that there was um gender like stereotypes were being determined by biology and now we're using biology now we're using gender to determine biology as so biology determined gender stereotypes, the male and the female and whatever. Mm-hmm. And there was a reaction to that. And now as a reaction to it, they're using gender to determine biology and how it's getting. Yeah, it's like. It's so confusing. It's so. 
Maybe. The thing is, there's just a broad spectrum of people, and there's low testosterone males, and there's high testosterone <laughs> females, and that should be okay. We should be allowed to be whatever the fuck we want, mm. but, but the thing is that the low testosterone males <laughs> can't compete with the high testosterone males, and the high testosterone females can't compete with the high estrogen females, and there's like, if you want a Barbie doll, and you, you're built like the Hulk, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're, if you want to be Barbie, but instead you're, you're, you're built like, um, Tom Arnold, what you know, which, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, one of them lesbians that always wears vests. <laughs> there's a type I'm of, definitely getting canceled. There's a type of <laughs> lesbian that wears those Patagonia vests everywhere, right? I have a Subaru. My brother's like, yeah, Brett, you could have just come out. You should come out. <laughs> like, those thick ones with the wide waist. <laughs> Is, I get called an alpha widow all the time. That's what the insults call what? me. Alpha widow. It's a term. Alpha widow. You, yeah, you can you can Google it and everything. It's like a woman who chases after alpha males, but they're not interested in like wifing me up, and so I end up a widow. <laughs> okay, that doesn't make any sense. But what I was gonna say is that like it's like the the mis- unrealistic body types. Is yeah, what I was yeah. Gonna say. Like this is a thing that gets brought up all the time. Okay, like, they've even, they've even had these promos and these advertisements taken down particularly in the uk there was a big story about that because they were promoting unrealistic body types okay and one of those guys tried to do that too one of those vox guys was is this a, a body positive was trying to no it's not oh. was trying to like say don't follow these gay is he's a gay guy and he's saying don't follow these uh gay instagram thirst pages because they're pr- promoting an unrealistic body type and okay. the fucking gay guys just attacked him <laughs> to the point where he had to shut his his <laughs> fucking Instagram down for a while because gay guys don't play with that shit. No! They, they don't, like, that unrealistic body type, you could pull it off on some women. They're like, it, yeah, it's unrealistic while they're eating cut cake. Yeah. But it's not unrealistic. That's a real woman. Okay? Yeah. It's just not your body type. Or it's not typical. Well, it, look, if you're a fucking, a person, I'm 5'8". If I look at a LeBron James, seven foot tall man, I go, well, that's an unrealistic body type. No, it's realistic. Yeah. He's playing basketball professionally. He's a real person. Yeah. It's not a fucking hologram. <laughs> yeah. It's not unrealistic. It's just unachievable for me. That's just that's just what it is. Just know this your is limits. Not, right. That's what that's what you got. That's the fucking hand you got. It yeah. has nothing to do with realistic or unrealistic. If you see a girl and she's got a tiny waist and a big ass and big tits, she's just got that Jennifer Lopez gene. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's just her. She got lucky. You didn't get that lucky. That is realistic. Yeah. Now, if they're using that to sell fucking Fanta or Adidas shoes or whatever the fuck it is, so what? If you're saying, well, all these girls feel terrible because that's unrealistic. That's life. That is that is life. Yeah. That Again, we, come back, to, we come back to why are we responsible for everyone's feelings? We're get not. Get off the fucking couch. And go do something about it if you don't if you don't want to if you don't want to feel sad. <laughs> do you know who no one cares about though? Fat dudes. Fat dudes I can know. fuck off. No one cares. No one feels bad about fat dudes. Well, they get away with the whole dad bod thing, which I wrote a whole piece about. <laughs> where it's like dad, dad bod bods isn't and guys with a gut like Burt Kreischer <laughs> bods. That bod. Dad bod isn't an excuse to be lazy though. I know some guys who will lean really into that. They're like, it's a dad bod. I'm like. Nah. What do you mean? They like they like it? Yeah, they kind of get away with it because it's mm. like you know, guys get like cute, adorable little dad bod, and women get like fupa. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so though. No girl wants a dad bod, do they? The some, only reason why a woman wants a dad bod is because they know that the guy has like less options, so he's more likely to stick around. <laughs> Right, <laughs> if a guy's got a dad bod, I was like, where are you going, bitch? Or he's rich. gonna fuck you there. <laughs> that, either one. But I mean, uh, look, I'm sure some women like doughy guys. They like it. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think some women like more like girth and meat, yeah. like a little bit of weight. Football player looking yeah, yeah. dudes. Some girls like big, thick women too. Everybody's big, different. Ones. Everybody yes. gets, I, I just think that if you like somebody, that's, and here to your point is that it's fine whatever you like, whatever your type is. If you're into like a big dude, if you're whatever, but the people who like people who are fit are somehow now being <laughs> shamed. The only thing that's changed is people's ability to express themselves online through social media. That's the only thing that's changed. And because of that, people are yelling about things that don't that that they can't do. Do you get fit they shamed? Can't oh, I get called a meathead. I guess that's fit shamed. Yeah. 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 Guilty as charged. Yeah. Fuck off. I don't care. Like but you, if, if you're going to shame me for being in shape, like congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't work. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
Because like, you feel great. It's you're like someone shame. shaming you for being successful. Oh, you got me. Sorry. Sorry, I figured out a lot of shit. It's such a weird, this is the weird, the weird world is that it feels like we're raising the, you know, we're, the bar isn't, it's being lowered and lowered and lowered. Yeah. And so instead of raising our standards and trying to everybody lift each other up, it's more just like a very small majority that's like, come down. But again, it's a tiny amount of people but it that are making this we've noise. We've been talking about it. It has an outsized influence. Well, it has people reacting to it. They're bending towards it. But I think it's it's temporary. Do I really you? Do. Yes. Look, it you're just, optimistic. Just, yes. You think it's gonna like eat yes. its own tail, yes. like yes, the or- is doing Ouroboros. It. You can never be woke enough. They go yeah, after yeah. each other. They they turn on each other. This I don't think it's real. I don't think it's real. Yeah. I think, look, there's certain but things I, that people always are gonna like, and there's certain things that men are gonna like, and certain things that women are gonna like. It's just it's just the way it is. I do think it gets um, sorted pretty quickly, like in 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 natural disasters you know yes, when i always say this i'm yes. like you can call yourself whatever you want and the other interesting thing is you know your computer knows better than you whatever you're saying your online search engine. yeah they've done studies yeah. and it's like it doesn't matter what you're saying online your search engine knows what gender you are essentially yeah i mean it can generally tell like probably with a a, a, a large accuracy oh what, yeah you look at my search results yeah. it would be fucking super obvious what i am <laughs> But I think that we just live in this really confusing moment in history. So I guess my fear is that the the the, the youth are in ingesting all this kind of um, It's confusing for them. Yeah, it is. It is, but it's also there's look, as much as I like to make fun of woke culture, the good thing about it is it's making people more sensitive. I agree. It's making people nicer. Yeah. But not n- not necessarily nicer because some <laughs> like, of the people that are woke are using that as an excuse to be a fucking asshole to people. Right. To force compliance and be an asshole. But because of that, because of that, it's, it's again, it's like the tide. It's, it's going in and, and out. Yeah. And it's, it's going to find its healthy level. Yeah. Gen Z is amazing. I have nephews who are Gen Z, and they're so funny. I don't even know what they are. They're the new ones. They're like How old are they? the, they're basically like um, nineteen and below. Ah. So and they're just so um, I don't know. They're just funny. Like my you know three years ago, my nephew they they've already taken all of this kind of woke language and right. they've they've Spit it out. metabolized it. Yeah. yeah. They're like they were like, dude, mom, she was so triggered, and they didn't mean it like she was she was like getting bullied or anything. She, it was like a girl who got a bad grade, and they were right. already using they're the language. It. Yeah, they're already yeah. taking it and memeing it. You know why? Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, they listen to podcasts. Those young oh, kids who listen to it all the time, and there's a huge, small Ben Shapiro cult of like twelve to fourteen year old <laughs> boys. It's no joke. You know what's really funny? The moms who hate him. <laughs> well, that's why. Yeah. I mean, all my friends, I have a lot of female friends on like the West Side and they are all super lib, you know, like right. cried for three days, acted like it was 9-11. I'm like, did planes Trump fly won? after Trump won? <laughs> <laughs> that lady with the fucking sock hat with the glasses. Oh, yeah. That's my, I still watch it every week. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. No. Tell me that lady didn't know a camera was on her. No, but that's the she b- fucking knew. That's it, of why course, she was, that's half the reason why she was doing it. It's that this way. book. Me- you have to read the book Mediated. It's my Bible for this time, and I read it in two thousand six. Thomas De Zengo Tisha. It's he wrote about. It's essentially like how the how we're we're all self reflexive, and he talks about this. How everyone in when everything is mediated, everyone knows their role. Mm. They know what part they're playing. This book is amazing. Is oh media? He he How called media shapes the world and the way you live. But he calls out all. He has a chapter on identity politics. I'm gonna write this down. And right it's now. like he called out all of this. He was explaining all this postmodernism before Jordan Peterson and all of the critical theory. All of the people there, and he's a brilliant writer. When was this? When did this? Two thousand six. It came out. Oh. It's so good. Oh. And I just uh, and two thousand six. <laughs> Isn't it crazy when someone catches shit like as it's happening? Mm. They catch the smell in the air. Yeah. And like, oh, I know where this is going. Yeah, yeah. He t- he called it, <laughs> and I've I re- I I probably reference this book on every talk I have because he talks about exactly this when Princess Diana died. He said, you know, everyone knew their roles. It was, and he was talking about how um, like the Monica Lewinsky thing is so interesting because she was like 
in her TED Talk, she talks about this, how she was patient zero for online mobbing. She, it was like the mm. first news story for the 24-hour news cycle and really the first person who got like mobbed by by everybody. Have you ever read John Ronson's book, So You've Been yes, Publicly Shamed? Yes, I love him. Yeah, yes. he's great. That book is amazing. And I, th- I remember because I got on Twitter right when the Justine Sacco thing happened yes. and I was like, this is bad. <laughs> What are you guys doing? I didn't know what was happening. I was like, this is not good, you That's guys. That's the story of your life. It's like walking into a fucking gang <laughs> no. fight. Hey, <laughs> hey, put the bottles down. Why do you have a torch? <laughs> what the true. fuck? I know, it's true. Every time I go on one of these things, they're like, how do you end up here? I'm like, I literally tweeted my ass into the center of the, <laughs> the culture wars. And I'm like, wait, what happened? Now I'm writing about uh. it. Oh my God. And then it is such weird times because, in so many ways, I mean, I went to the sex robot factory and I just Mm -hmm. wrote about this for uh, a column that's coming out. And it was like that whole uncanny valley, you know, that, you know, that I felt like I was like walking in and out of it through the whole. It was a place where Whitney. Yeah. Have you seen hers? Yeah. And it was where she got hers done. Yeah. And it was such a weird, um, it was like, it was so, you know how they're making them like warm. I'm like, as soon as these yeah. things can make sandwiches, like <laughs> we're fucked. It's gonna happen. No, women, women are done. We're gonna be toast. Did you see wh- Ex Machina? Yes. She's hot, even though you can see through her skin mm-hmm. into her robot mm-hmm. parts. Mm-hmm. She's still hot. Yeah. Like th- that that whole Turing test that's g- going to happen. Like people are going to not be able to distinguish whether or not something is a robot or a person. It's going to happen. Ugh, it's God. probably going to happen within a hundred years. And then they're so funny because I, in the piece I was writing, I'm like, it's so weird because they're all so optimistic and they're like, no, it's for the guys who are lonely. And it's like that opening <laughs> scene in Jurassic Park where you're like, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, like, I wrote something a long time ago where I was making fun of people who had real dolls, and this guy wrote to me, and it made me feel bad did he lose his wife oh no 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 he was just like horribly scarred from acne and oh. he can never get a girl and you know he just had just a shit roll of the dice yeah yeah and you know he was talking but he goes I'll, I'll i'll you know i'd be happy to talk to you about it. like sometimes in, you know you make fun of something and then someone reaches out to you and you there now you're a human that you're communicating with. yeah you're yeah like, oh this isn't fun anymore well that was what <laughs> Wendy was saying you know, she's like yeah. she was saying that she wanted to kind of think they were all creeps, and then she went on their on their message boards, and they were all like really lovely guys who took really good care of their dolls, yeah. and and I think that again, there's uh, you know relationships and human sexuality are complicated. But when I was asking the guy in charge of AI, because what creeped me out more than even the dolls hanging from the meat hooks, like all of that shit, was that. There, so with the app, you know how you sh- I'm sure she explained it how it works. Where it's like now they're getting into. Did you see the movie Her? Yes. Okay, so it's that's really what they're focusing on. So that it's essentially like if you had the app and then you left to go to the podcast because it's in your schedule, then the robot would be like, "See you soon, Joe. Miss ya," and it would yeah. send a text. And so now you have this relationship, and really the doll is just the physical form of this persona that you have a relationship with in the cloud. And I, I was like, pee. okay. It's so bad. And I'm gonna, we can stop for a second. You, how can we stop? I mean, uh, we don't have to, I guess, to say, but. Can you guys talk for a second? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to we Jamie can, real quick. I just said, we did two podcasts in a row. No, I have to no. pee real bad. I'll be right back. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> jump in a restaurant talk. <laughs> We're going to talk about restaurants. <laughs> I mean, you can. But we I want to talk about that, but I can't concentrate. Yeah, I can get it. I have these. When did you go to the sex doll factory? Uh, like last month. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. The piece is in, um, it's coming out soon, actually. It's in, Spectator has a, it was, it's like the oldest magazine in uh, the UK. And they are, la- they launched a United States version. And um, so they have one. And then the the next column I wrote for them is about the, um, it's like that called the Uncanny Valley of the Dolls. Did they show you any uh, new, anything new they're working on? Not or is it real, all I mean, the same it's all the same and it seems pretty, they not, you know, they have like the self lubricating ones coming and like the, the ones that heat up and. It's more the technology that they're trying to make more interactive. So it's the actual AI that's really interesting. And then I think they want to move towards like getting cameras in the eyes 
And it was so funny because the, the AI guys are so funny, guys who deal with that. It, they're just a different breed. And he was like, I was on a jury and I was thinking, this would be the perfect place to have a sex doll with a camera in the eyes. <laughs> That's your thought? Like, I was just saying if this. only there was a sex doll in the corner with uh, with the cameras in the eyes. I think of a quick question. I wonder, like, is there any women that are working there? Is it all guys? It's all women. Programming? No, no, no. Okay, and okay. and that's what was so interesting is that, and I talk about this in the piece. I'm like, there's my perception, which is that I'm going to this huge warehouse, and it's like all these kind of sketchy dudes, and it's like a dystopian kind of creep show. And then I get there, and it's mostly just artists and women and men and people who are, um, you know, like character design and they're truly artists they're like all these you walk in and it looks like a fucking tattoo parlor yeah. and so you're uh, other than like the different sets of lips and nipples on the wall you would think you were walking into like a tattoo parlor so it's so chill and then um and yeah you kind of go in and out of um it being like that when you hear the stories of the people who lost their wife or or mm. somebody who had acne you i see the how this is useful and and maybe it, like people just want to hold like you said they want to hold something it's incremental steps <laughs> to a robot dominating of reality Reality is going to be either virtual Oof. or you're going to have a combination of virtual and augmented, and you're going to probably be overtaken by robots. I think that fucking Unabomber guy was right. Yeah. Ted Kaczynski? <laughs> you know, that guy, he did a <laughs> bunch of what? acid. <laughs> they were... fucking cooked his brain. What did he say? Well, he thought that technology was going to take over the human race. Mm. That's why he was killing all those people that were involved in technology. I have a theory that... With the escalation of our like climate, <laughs> you know, right. whatever that, and I heard this panel back in 2000. It was like I remember being. It was all about the nature of the soul, and is the soul um, essentially, and human consciousness essentially going to jump elements from carbon to silicon in order to survive the wasteland that we're going to leave behind? Well, I don't, yeah, there's something going to happen. I think there's a new form is of that life the is singularity? Take place. And I think Trump was on extra Adderall when he's like, I know what to do. I'm going to buy Greenland. <laughs> I think he was on to something. I think that was like probably the best fucking idea that he ever had. And I wish people got more excited about it because he came up with it and like it was dismissed and it was in and out of the news cycle in like four or five days. Greenland was like, fuck you. He's like, all right. But I mean, I didn't know you could buy a Greenland. But if you could, <laughs> and that was like America Northeast, like wh <laughs> where is Greenland on the map? Way, yeah. Northwest? No. Northeast. Yeah. Way Northeast, right? Yeah. So if he was like, that's America Northeast, just like Alaska and Hawaii, we got a new one. That's a fucking great idea. Because when shit gets really warm and people start moving there and like, guys, this is the shit. <laughs> like, it's fucking 78 degrees year it's round. It's going to be nice and green. Yeah, we got a couple it's extra polar bears around here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. you can defend it. It's not, I mean, how big is Greenland? Huge. How huge? Big. Big enough for all of us? Yeah. Could it be American Northeast? Oh, yeah. Really? Really? Big. Let's uh, is perspective. That big? Put um, on the screen uh, the size of Greenland in. Uh, first, first the U.S. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what do wait. you think? Uh, never mind. What I feel do you like think? it's. I, I, I don't the think it was that big. Wait, never mind. No, no, but I didn't think it was that big. Continental U.S. Or are we including Alaska? You uh, know? Continental. Because Alaska continental. makes us big, enormous. way bigger. Alaska is enormous, but nobody lives there. Like three people live in Alaska. <laughs> Um, Sorry, Alaska. We love you. <laughs> yeah, it was Alaska. I thought it was way bigger. Alaska's bare. They are barely Americans. They're awesome. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they live in paradise. So that's like true size is what it says. Mm -hmm. But Holy shit, it's huge. Yeah, I know, but when you drop it there, it fits right in the middle. So like, Yeah, but that's bigger than Texas. Yeah, Dude, Texas could fit everyone in America. Wow, look at the size it? of it up there. Yes, Texas is huge. People don't realize how big Australia is. Australia's pretty big. It's as big as the contiguous United States. Mm -hmm. But there's only as many people, as less, less than as many people as Los Angeles. And look at this one. Right. This map is a yeah, weird that's perspective crazy. angle. <laughs> that's look at the perspective. Oh, shit. Well, how does it look? Isn't that crazy? When you see the actual position, it looks way bigger than the United States. Dun, dun, dun. But then when you... Uh, that's because of like taking a round thing and yeah. flattening yeah, yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah. That's so stupid. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> Whoever's this is why the maps, flatter there's less. Yeah. The, yeah, I told you. It doesn't work, man. The ice wall. <laughs> You, you know just, the really like, gave all the evidence. The really need. crazy thing <laughs> is the oh okay that's yeah, the really crazy thing is how many things fit in Africa. Everything fits in Africa. Ah. Almost 
every continent, almost every country in the Have world. Have you been? No. But mm. if you look at like how many countries fit inside of Africa, because you see Africa, you go, oh yeah, there's South America, there's Africa. Okay. <laughs> They're about <laughs> it, the same. Yeah, it looks the same. But then when you see like, superimposed all of the united states europe asia china like really all, fucking everything look that's africa uh-huh look at all that shit whoa i know i didn't like, realize that i know it's nuts india fits in there everything fits in there oh my god this Dude, is like the whole france look at that spain wow fuck off. Everything. I didn't realize Switzerland, that. Switzerland, Switzerland's so tiny. Italy. Why is Switzerland even on there? Because the they make good knives. <laughs> they make army knives. Wow, I didn't. Not, I didn't realize that. Look I at China. Never... China. I mean, China. Fucking... China. <laughs> it's crazy how big Africa is. I've never been. I want to go. I'm have you been to India? No. Why are you scared of malaria? Can't you? Because it kills it? people. Kills more people than anybody. My that... dad got malaria when he was there. Whoa. He's alive though. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? My friend Justin, who uh, he runs Fight for the Forgotten Charity, mm -hmm. building wells for mm -hmm. the pygmies, he's gotten it three times. Oh, yeah. Three times. Malaria? Yeah. Did he have to take the pills that made him crazy? He took the pills and it made him crazy for sure, but he got malaria and then if he gets really sick, he can get malaria again. It'll uh, kick back in. It's like dormant in his system. Yeah. They've come a long way though because the old school pills made you like- Crazy. Yeah. The ones yeah. the soldiers had to take, they were all like psychotic. Dave Foley from News Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to keep him from assaulting a reporter once he was <laughs> drunk on malaria. He was drunk and he'd take malaria medication. Oh no. Yeah. And some, he took a, the reporter's microphone or he took his tape recorder and shoved it in his drink. And I was like, Dave, what Do are you, you doing? Do you still act? No. Never? No, 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 no. You, did, you just don't- Last time I acted was uh, in a Kevin James movie. Oh, just, okay. Just because he's a buddy of mine. You that just don't want to do it? No. Oh. No desire. No. I guess I have been to Africa because of Egypt. Yeah, Egypt's yeah. there. I really yep. want to go to Egypt. Yeah, I've been. That's where I got this ring. Oh. It was amazing. Did you get it from a tomb? And is it is that haunted? That's all of my power. No. Um, it, was, it was one of my favorite trips. That I've been same science museum had this insane exhibit on uh, on Tutankhamun. Mm, I on went the mummies twice. You, yeah, I'm fuck, obsessed. Fucking incredible. I was uh, I was really obsessed with Egypt from a very young age, really? just unnaturally. Have do you, you believe in past lives? How do you feel? I about don't this? not believe. That's how I feel. Yeah, I, this is what I think. You know how people are. You know, like some people have arachnophobia, this unusual fear of spiders. Mm -hmm. I think that probably comes from someone in your ancestry getting bitten by a spider. Oh, that's interesting. Like people have instincts, right? Animals right. Have, like Marshall. Okay, Marshall has been my dog. <laughs> he's pretty lovable. He's the best. He doesn't he, seem too fierce. He's, he's not fierce at all. He's a sweetheart, but he has instincts, mm -hmm. right? Like he lifts up his leg and pees on things. Right. He smells where other dogs have peed, and he pees there too. I didn't teach him how to do that. Okay? No. When he was a puppy. But when I got him, when he was six weeks old, he would just pee all over the place. Anytime he had to pee, he would squat down and pee. But then as he got older, he has instincts. Like right. there's some in inherent memory in his genes. I want to know how they decide where to poop. If I find out one thing before I die, like if I get to choose one thing, I'm like, how does my dog make this decision? Well, I mean, I know it's instinct, but what? Someone told what me is they she face determining? a way. That's not true. I've, ke I've, <laughs> I've kept track. <laughs> I have a whole <laughs> list of every direction Hope is pooping in. Well, when I run with Marshall, he generally poops in the same area, <laughs> like within like a hundred yards, like wherever we run, like there's this area that we come, we come down off of this hill. He's like, this is a good spot to take a shit. Yeah. And then he drops a log right there. I just want to know, is it like territorial? Is there some dog that has some food that she's like out fooding where she's like, my food's better. He de there's definitely some sort of territorial thing to it because they they'll roll in shit too. Like my dog doesn't. She's not. Yeah. She won't even step in it. Really? She's like very prissy about that well, stuff. Marshall has rolled in other dog shit. She doesn't want to eat it. She's not one of those dogs <laughs> at all. She's like she's a, she's very particular and she always has to go to the edge of the. It's weird. She always goes to the edge of the curb, like or the you know in between the sidewalk and whatever she's it's called. She's got her spot. But she, it's not the same spot every time. She, and she's very picky. It's like, okay, fucking pick a spot. I want to know. And my whole thing about past lives is I'm like, well, until you can tell me they definitively aren't true, I'm going to believe they are. <laughs> I, think, I think it's just think, more interesting. What I was going to get at is that there's a memory that right. gets passed down through your genes. And I think 
Sire's an Egyptian. There's well, there's probably some weird fucking memory that all of us have from all the different ancestors that we share DNA with. It only makes sense. Isn't it funny how everyone Families. always thinks they're going to be like the king or the queen, and it's like no, you were sucking you were dick the for slave. homemade wine. <laughs> You were, I was a fucking starving slave for yeah. like 10,000 generations. Yeah. I know it. I was a nobleman. No, you weren't. I ruled across a great land. That's like, guys, I wrote about, Um, I write a lot about, uh, when I was a playboy, I wrote about, like, uh, I, I, I had this experience too. I was like the second wife. I wasn't a wife, but I was a second in an open marriage. And all, all the guys think they're going to be that guy. And it's like, the, I was reading this book and I forget which book it was or something. And it said, actually, that men who had multiple wives and women had to start like n- not hogging all the women because it was causing so much so <laughs> strife problems. within the like tribes. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan Peterson talks about that, too. That That's one of the problem with incels. Is that there's the men like the alpha men like mm-hmm. the Jason Momoas of the world? They have uh, you know if they wanted to, they could have a, a gang of women, yeah. and then other guys be like, "Hey, what about me?" <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of honestly, I kind of liked the situation. The guy was so alpha, and it almost took two women to like balance him out. And from my perspective, I was like, I want a wife. I, me as a as a wife would want a wife too. I would want someone else to like. We it was so like we did the gardening and like. How shared. long did this work out for? <laughs> it didn't work out for that long. Like a couple, couple months. Weeks, no, couple months. no, it was, a, it was a while. Did you see the king of Thailand like Mm-mm. formally got rid of his concubine? What did, what did he call him? He like royal mistress. Royal mistress. Uh, yeah, not con- concubine would be a, a whore, right? Border. Yes, a little old school. Old, old school. It's about the same thing, I think. I'm not sure. Well, concubine had, has more flair to it. Official <laughs> royal mistress that was actually like she had rank in the military. Oh, yeah, and she apparently disrespected the queen, so you had to shut her down, and he had to uh, strip her of her power. Oh, and I was reading. I thought this, you were going like, somewhere what? else with that. <laughs> strip her down. Yeah, I was like, piss on her. In front of everybody. What's happening? When you go to Thailand, <laughs> you cannot talk shit ever. There it is. There's the. For King, I don't know how to spell, say his name. Vag, oh my God! Vajralongkorn. Vag- with great power <laughs> comes no responsibility at all. <laughs> well, so he has this. Uh, what, Was that his wife? Well, let me see the. What is the article? The King of Thailand. How do you say that? Peremptorily. I've, I've never seen that word ever. <laughs> Have you ever seen that word? You're a writer. No, no, I, I don't. Peremptorily. Peremptorily. Is that dismisses his official mistress? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, she was talking shit about the wife. She disrespected the wife. He's wow. like, kick rocks, bitch. What does it mean? I don't know. Look at her name. Oh boy. I, now I have to. I'm gonna be. I look, look up that. every word. I don't know this. So Ingratitude, now. misbehavior, and disloyalty. These were among the failings of try saying her name. S i n e e n a t c siniat. And here's the big one. W O N G V A G I R A P A K D I. I don't even want to try that one. Long Detailed in a scathing royal statement on October 21st. Apparently, the mistress uh, oh, she wanted, wanted to the elevate same. herself to the same state as the queen. Of course. Yeah, number that was two always that wants was to be a, one. that was ultimately why it didn't work out. Really? You well, wanted be, to be number one. I didn't want to be number one because that has a lot more responsibility, and I'm not really that type A. But I didn't feel like um, I felt like everyone's needs were being. I was like, "Hey, are you okay? Are you okay?" And no one was like, "Hey, is Bridget okay?" So oh. I, I felt like the my my needs were the ones that got. Um, Pushed aside. Pushed aside. Mm. Yeah. Well, you can call that bitch. I'm sure you and <laughs> <laughs> we can start a little you, meeting. You, you and that whatever name. No, it's fine. It was fine. It was. It was really just one of those things. I'm such a writer and so curious. What on the? Sh- she was just made that position in July. It was the first time it was done in over a century. Oh. So she lost it very quickly. That's apparently. really wow. fast. <laughs> that she basically was like, "Yo, I want to be number one after like a month." Yeah. All right, yeah. that's a little a entitled. She gave it a shot. Calm down. What do you think? Prostate then? herself before the king and queen, a former flight attendant who he married in May. Mm. Oh, the queen's a former flight attendant. Do you All know right. that? And um, yeah. my friend's a flight attendant, and she was telling me because they don't have unions, and all my friends from around the world are always like, "Why are all the all the old ladies up in first class?" Because in 
over in like all the Asian airlines, you're pretty much done at age 30. My friend works at United. She's like, you're done at 30 if you're, Why? you're, because you're, you're, it's a young people. It's like they want young, good looking women. So they fire you? They, I mean, they don't have unions, so in they're Asia, not. <laughs> in, in Asia. Yeah. But they have them in America. Right? Yeah, we have them. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have. That's why, like, oh, all so the old ladies saying, are in first why class. Are these old ladies, yeah. Up there? Oh. Like all my friends from uh, around the world are like, I don't understand. That's where like the hottest people should be. <laughs> well, that used to be what flight attendants were. They were almost like uh, cocktail waitresses at mm. like bottle service. You know? It's a hard job. My my best friend. Mm. I mean, their schedule is insane. I could yeah. never do it. And just the way they get treated, their punching bags, and their first responders. Most people don't understand that the, they're all so well trained and they're the ones that if shit goes down they're the first responders right, and then they have to call out and hope a doctor's on the plane it's Ooh. crazy i mean the stuff she's told me where she's like had to you know two old ladies fighting over she's like ladies i'm embarrassed for you <laughs> like this it's is also it. like they're a waitress who tells you what to do yeah they're a waitress who tells you how to seat Sit down and buckle yourself was up. Was that your stand up? That's in your bit yeah, where you're yeah. talking. That's hilarious. <laughs> I was laughing so hard because I, I remember getting so high and actually, I hated airports when I was high. I was always like, okay. Because I get anxious around security. I'm the girl that could never be a drug mule. <laughs> like, <laughs> I look guilty. I look guilty <sighs> if I didn't do anything. They, I get randomly searched every time I fly. Every time. You I look don't, sketchy. I look sketchy. Yeah. I think it's the eyebrows. That's what a homeless guy told me. What'd you say? <laughs> he said my eyebrows made me look like trouble. What? A homeless <laughs> guy told you that? Yeah. <laughs> you have normal eyebrows. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. It he's, doesn't make any sense. Anyway, maybe that's why that's I get why flagged. That's why he's homeless. <laughs> he's, he doesn't, his shit judgment. That's why he's homeless. <laughs> I don't know. He's on what he's calling. Jamie, you're like extra Columbus today, man. You yeah, he's a Columbus shirt. You got a C hat. It's a Cleveland hat. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're extra Ohio today. Yes. You're doubling down. Yes. Oh, we're Represent. at Cleveland this weekend. Holla, Saturday night. See you there, bitches. That'll be fun. Yeah. That's where everybody's I going. Love Cleveland. Why? Because now all the people can't afford to live in California. So a couple of my friends have moved to Ohio, actually. They're all going back. And also where um, Texas is a big one. Idaho, I heard, Texas is the secret. Texas is filling up, though. Don't go to Idaho. Austin. Idaho is the next dope. secret one. Boise? They're going to be mad I told the secret. Yeah, I've told already. Yeah. D Boise's pretty fucking yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. So people are leaving because you, you, it's so the cost of living here is insane. The cost of living is insane and... A fault line that hasn't moved in 500 years just shifted yesterday. I know, but they de the lady that I follow on Twitter who's like a seismologist debunked that it's not as big of a worry. That bitch is going to be the first one to die. <laughs> the earth's going to open up under her feet and swallow we her up doing, like a big mouth. We were doing a joke about that on the week on the dumpster fire video. I was like, you know, the, the protesters who like super glue their hand. I'm like, what if what? you did? They super glue their hand to the fucking pavement. And for what? For the... All those crazy climate protests. What are you talking about? I've, I've, no, I've no knowledge of this. <sighs> You're saying it like I know. I mean, I thought everyone saw these insane Extinction Rebellion videos. What are Can you doing? Google this? They're Google um, protester. Oh, my God. What they is this super glue their hands. person doing? But they all do it. Look and at, I was like... What's her name? Farhana Ya... Oh, God damn it. These pop-ups. No, there's so there's so many more. There was Great. one girl... So somebody tweeted about how his favorite image was a girl doing it and then not realizing that she had taken her backpack off yet. So you see her like super glue her hand and then she goes... <laughs> And I'm like, why are you doing this? I don't understand what this they, is. She super glued herself to the Shell headquarters, the the concrete outside. But of can Shell you imagine if you do that, and then there's an earthquake, and then you're just hanging by your super glued hand over the crack? But can you imagine when you want to get your hand back? No. Super glued. Do not pull me. Oh my god. Fuck you. They're glued on. Do not try to move. They have little signs. How do they get their fucking glue off? Look at her. I don't know. Glued. That's do what I was try wondering. To move. Why are they doing this? Fucking morons. Because they're morons. It just pisses everyone off. Well, did you see but that, you those had that, that guy who had the bee, the dead bee on the cover of his book, right? <laughs> dead bee on the cover of his. He book. was like he wrote that book, and it's all about the climate. And I forgot. Yes. Yes. I just yes. remember the cover because I was like, really right. a dead bee. <laughs> yeah. Who was that again? That's dramatic. Um, well, he scared the fuck out of me. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen this bee? 
Look at that fucker. No. The what is that it? bitch. What kind of weird shit do you get? Well, that was actually Maynard from Tool sent me that. Oh. It's from his fucking vineyard. Oh. That's one of them hornet wasps. Tarantula. That tarantula thing? hawk. Yeah. They kill tarantulas and lay their eggs inside of them. Yeah. One time. What's the size of that fucker? It's a goddamn bird. Yeah. No, I would be. Yeah, he was telling me how gross they are and how huge they are. Then he fucking sent me one. I was like, all right. Yeah, no. He's like, what's Mm-mm. your address? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this fucking comes in the mail. Yeah, you must get some weird stuff. Yeah, I get some weird stuff yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, I see all the um, pictures of the tattoos people get of you. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the weirdest thing. There's probably hundreds of tattoos of my face on people's bodies. Does that, what does that make you feel? <sighs> the, all me, of this is. Tell me how that makes you feel. My therapist. <laughs> yeah. Can we do this through FaceTime? <laughs> um, I just, the whole, being me feels real like you would think oh you're used to it Uh uh-uh i'm not used to it at all Mm -hmm. being me is fucking strange Mm -hmm. like people that love me people that hate me all of it's weird yeah like all of it's weird it's strange the all the attention every time people call my name like uh, i'm about to go on stage and people cheer i'm like really yeah yeah it all feels strange yeah never feels real and when did you start this podcast yeah 10, ten years ten ago years in ago? december oh wow this december 24th it'll be 10 years oh that's amazing yeah and what have you learned the most from it over the year did you have any why did you start it just for a goof me and brian redband did it for fun because we used to do this thing we would do in the green rooms where we would uh it was on a thing called justin tv justin.tv <clears throat> and we would flip up this laptop and we talk to people in the green room yeah. of like comedy clubs just for fun. Okay. And then one day I was like, yeah, let's do it at my house. So he came over to my house and we did it. And we were like, people would ask questions. You were like fucking literally like 10 yeah, people yeah. online or 100 people. Yeah, that was like pre, yeah. I mean, yeah. definitely podcast. We were doing that. There was some podcast back then. Mm-hmm. There was like um, Adam from MTV. What is his name again? Jamie? The guy? Curry. Adam Curry. Adam Curry was probably the first. And I think he actually invented the name podcast. Mm. And then Corolla in two thousand. What year is oh this? My gosh. This is Twelve years ago. In this the is the Green Room. Irvine. Ah, Irvine Improv. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Twelve years ago. <laughs> that yeah. is crazy. So this is what we used to do. We would be in the Green Look Room. Look at little in, Red Band. Mm-hmm. In between it's shows. Well, that was when uh, Red Band had lost a ton of weight. Red Band broke up with his girlfriend and decided <laughs> to uh, get sexy. For you. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Just kill this. I don't want to see okay, myself. Sorry. Twelve. Look at a beautiful <laughs> beard, though. Um, well, so anyway, we decided to do these um, videos, uh, just talking to people yeah. online. And then the next thing you know, we're like, oh, let's do it next week. So we did it next week. Let's do it again. Okay. Um. Let's let's. And then uh, Brian was like, uh, people are asking us to put this on iTunes. Like, okay, let's put it on iTunes. So we started putting them on iTunes. All right, let's do it every week. Let's do it every week. And then it just by complete just sort of natural occurrences by natural circumstances it just snowballed and then other guys started doing it and then you know so many comics how did it get to like this yeah that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying i don't know i think this thing has a life of its own yeah i think this thing like this tarantula hawk sticks a fucking needle in that tarantula's body and impregnates it with eggs technology impregnated me it gave me this idea Mm -hmm. to to do this it forced me and it it found what i'm good at and what i'm good at is talking to people Uh and i'm curious yeah yeah so but like if you can get me a place where i can sit down for three hours and ask a guy like sean carroll explain to me astrophysics explain to me quantum mechanics Mm -hmm. explain to me this explain how do vaccines work how does this work how does that work (laughs) you know what what is what is a propulsion what 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 makes the sun be stay hot like what what, why why does that work how does the inner working of a cell phone what how does it what is 5g is that bad for you is that Mm -hmm. giving you cancer Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) what all these i i'm i've always been a person who asks a lot of questions and likes talking to people yeah and you don't seem to be um too i i feel very similar to you in this respect is that i'm not trying to like got get any you know to have someone on and talk to them to be like i got you no that's <laughs> like, the last thing i want to do i just want to hear people's perspective and their yeah. point of view and learn things i mean i i laugh when i think of when you're naming all these people and i'm like and then you have this moron no you're fun <laughs> who, Come on, into, stop. who tweeted her way into the center of the culture war i yeah. feel like i have gym teacher mouth right now 
<laughs> what does that mean? Like I a mean, little white stuff on the like edges? Like when you talk, you know, a while, I call it, I don't know, I've always called it gym teacher mouth. No, you're fine. Okay. No worries at all. I'm going to get self-conscious. Don't. It's um, <laughs> yeah, I mean. You know, though, gym teachers always had that. I never noticed until now. <laughs> Uh, do you know what she's saying? I know, I know exactly what she's saying. My <laughs> basketball coach had. Yeah, we used to laugh as a team, like it would just fly around and hit people and shit. I feel like this is relatable. Joey Diaz gets that all the time, like a little white piece, like on his lips, and you're like, "Do I tell him? <laughs> Let him talk." No, yeah. tell him. Oh, not Joey. No, no, Let no. Let him talk. I don't want him to be self-conscious. Yeah, I'd rather just stare at the white thing. On his no, lips. I think it's cool though that you've had in this time when there's um, everybody has like these political abstractions are just two dimensional ab- abstractions you seem to have actually like hit that zeitgeist of desire because they're like oh everything everyone has a short attention span I'm like well people are listening to joe for like fucking 25 hours a day i don't think people have short attention spans i think that people can have short attention spans like you can be distracted by a music video that constantly switches scenes over yeah, and yeah, over yeah. and over again but some people like to sit down and watch a conversation. Mm-hmm. And like me, I don't get bored having long conversations. Yeah. I enjoy them. And yeah. I think if you're not bored while you're having a long conversation, interesting conversation, the people that are listening won't get bored either. Yeah. But if you're bored, they'll get bored. Yeah. So you have to be genuinely interested. That's why the beautiful thing about having a podcast where there's no one that's telling me, hey, you have to have this person on, or this guy's got a movie coming out. I want you to have this person on, and we're going to have this person on because she has an album out. There's none of that. Right. So- if I have someone on, like, hey, Gary Clark Jr.'s got a new album. I love that guy. Let's bring him in. It's always someone who I genuinely think is cool. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I have real interest yeah. in talking to them. And you get to just, I mean, it's its just so, it's so funny how many, I was laughing because I'm like, I think a lot of my exes listen to you. <laughs> So this very moment right now is yeah, like that bitch get the on. sweetest revenge of all. Ah, that's hilarious. <laughs> it must be. You have. I think you had a joke about that where you're like, I'm sorry to the ladies who had to come yeah. <laughs> because their boyfriends made them. <laughs> I went to your, your set and it was like, it was literally like a, um, what do they call it? Like casting, you know, central casting of like Joe Rogan fans. I was the only one in the audience who didn't have a tattoo. No, I'm 100% possible. sure of that. <laughs> so Maybe not a hundred. Not a hundred. I wouldn't bet all your chips. I wouldn't push ah. all your chips out of that table. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me either. I'm the anybody. only person who didn't have a Joe Rogan tattoo. Did <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that? In the whole ad- and they just hold up your face at <laughs> oh you. Oh my god, it's on their wrists. <laughs> yeah. Right they're gonna slice it after I quit. <laughs> This Are you gonna move? Slice. Are you staying in Cali? I don't know. Mm. It, I am preparing for this thing to fall apart. Though mm. the fucking Palisades was on fire yesterday. Yeah, I know. When the Palisades is on fire, that shit's rough. That's get. I've never like one of the things we were thinking about. Like, hey, um, fucking all these fires over here in the valley. Yeah, maybe we should move to the Palisades. No, and then the Palisades catch on fire. Yeah, yeah. I heard it was arson. Did you hear that? I think I, I yeah. read that. I mean, yeah. I could be completely Let's wrong. Let's, <laughs> Let's not do any research at all. Don't even Google it. Let's spread that rumor. I heard it was incels. Incels that were mad at Dan Belzerian's house. I heard Fucking it was, somebody, it on fire. It was a, a Joker premiere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In someone's yeah. private home. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't, I, I'm not sure. I go back and forth because Where would I, you go? That's the thing. I, I love it here. I mean, you know what I like? Colorado. Yeah, I like Colorado a lot. It's yeah. the healthiest state. Is it really? I think it's the most fit state. Again, I can be sense. completely making up. this up. Fuck it. Let's <laughs> run with it. Makes sense. I mean, you go well, like, and the place altitude. like Boulder. Yeah. yeah. Boulder, everybody's out there jogging, hiking and I shit. I was just in Aspen. Bikes. Fuck, it's oh. gorgeous there. Oh, my God. Aspen rich people know summer. what's up. Yeah, they're not stupid. They're rich. No, they know what's up. That's the place the to go. Have you prices for yeah. houses in Aspen? Yeah. It's like they're trying to keep the riffraff out. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you have to, when you do that dodgy fly in, Ooh, so I dodgy. love it. I it's so love dodgy. it. It is I dodgy. A, I know a dude whose friends died in a plane. Flying into Aspen? Yeah, private jet slammed into the mountain. Yeah, Boom. you're flying right into the... It you're a snow it's out. It was a white out. Terrifying. They see, and they fucked up. Hit the mountain, couldn't pull up in time. I was like, I never been to Cabo until recently, and I was like, rich people know what's up. <laughs> yeah, they know what's up. Cabo's a wreck, though. Is it? It's everyone's so drunk. Oh. It's so ridiculous. Like the I beach. was in the rich people part. Oh, there you go. I was like off where like Jennifer Aniston rents our house. Yeah, I have a buddy golf who owns a, he owns a fat condo out there in Cabo. They go there all the time. 
It's special and magical. There were lots of whales. It is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Mexico's yeah. fucking amazing. If and the food. Along. Did you see what's going on right now in no. Sinaloa? The Sinaloa cartels and what 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 part of it? Culiacan. I, fe- I forget what part of Mexico. On Instagram going but um, how do you keep track of all this shit? I don't know. I don't know. Like in between all of these interviews and all the stuff you do and working out and hunting elk for dinner. Well, this is all <laughs> over the news though. And and my friend Ed Calderon, who's been on the podcast before, he actually. He runs like the the Mexican anti cartel. He's like one of those anti cartel military guys. Oh, Mexico. okay, okay. Yeah, and he explained uh, a lot of like what's going on down there. What's going on? Me. Well, they arrested El Chapo's son. And oh, then the, I did see that in the news. There was a gunfight. Many parts of Mexico, the government has surrendered in fight against it's cartels. Nuts. It's very it's bad. It's lawless. Well, yeah, the, the cartels have unlimited amounts of money because they're selling drugs to white people. Yeah, white people need white to stop doing drugs. White people here in America are buying all the cartels, cocaine, and meth. <laughs> yeah, if you care about Mexico, Woo! stop doing drugs. Stop it. That's like the all the stop hippies. It. I always laugh hysterically when they're like, you know, super gluing themselves to, and getting all high. I'm like, do you have any idea? I've worked on these farms. I see what they do to the environment. Like, you're not exactly helping the environment with your weed habit. No offense to all the weed smokers. I love you. Bye. Well, any large scale agriculture is devastating to the environment. It's so Mono sad cultures. what's happening with big weed up there. Because I, w- I worked over the. I can't believe you call it big weed it is big weed <laughs> it is you don't I think know. it is yeah, i'm sure it is but that expression big weed is yeah. like so hilarious like <laughs> weed is an industry now it is yeah. and it was i because i worked up in the farms for the transition so i worked from when it was like mom and pop just places and now they're paving over some of the most fertile soil in freaking Oregon or California so that they can put these huge mm-hmm. domes that give off all this light so they can build. It's fucked yeah. up. It's well, fucked. It's, it's big weed. Anytime you have large scale agriculture, animals and the environment get fucked over. Yeah. This is something that like vegans hate hearing this. But if you're buying grain, you're buying grain most likely from large scale agriculture. And that shit is fucking terrible for animals. Uh, terrible for the environment. Yeah. Terrible for like you're <laughs> not supposed to have thousands of acres of all one thing. Yeah. You're not supposed to have that. That's uh, not normal. You can't have thousands of acres of corn. <laughs> I always used to laugh because it's such the, like, they would rewash the little plastic Ziploc baggies, you know, at the Mm -hmm. farm. And they'd be like, we're going to recycle these. And there would be, like, huge entire piles of just deer netting that you use to, like, keep the colas up. Like, just piles of plastic. I'm like, okay, guys. Like, (laughs) I'm not sure. Not at the place where I was. That's good. That's and, good. But it was a lot of like the teas they make, you know, to like boost these things. Holy shit. I mean, it's what are they crazy. What's the teas? What it's do you mean? like they use all these um, uh, different different things like fertilizers and different and they make these huge batches of teas that they use to fertilize tea like tea that's what like they call Lipton it. tea it's not tea it's like they just call it tea and it's hmm. like a booster for the I just mean, nutrients essentially yeah basically yeah and it yeah. boosts the, t- the THC uh, yeah and it boosts just the you know the. It, this is all like outdoor it's so interesting that, like, in the 1990s when I first came here, you had to have a license. I think it was, like, 94, 95, it became legal. And I didn't start smoking until 90. What became legal? Legal medically. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, is that long ago? Yeah, I think it was, huh. 90, I think it was, I want to say it was wow. 95. What what year was uh, marijuana medically We're really legal? Making I think it's Jamie nine. Mark. Na- Jamie's a motherfucker with that <laughs> Google. He Google's better than any man that's ever lived. I think it's uh, ninety four. I think ninety four. They passed the the medical marijuana laws. Oh, ninety six. Ninety six. So I started smoking in ninety eight. I came here in ninety four. I started smoking in ninety eight. And back then, it was still sketchy. Like, you smoked for the first time in ninety eight? No, I smoked a handful of times when I was young. Okay. Between the time I was like 14 and 30, oh, I might have smoked pot. I don't think it was so 10 So you didn't times. really start smoking until you were 30? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't and even think it was 10 times. How do you feel in your in your sober October? Like, what, what are the biggest differences that you notice, or do you notice any? I feel great. 
Yeah. Yeah. The, it's, Do you the feel booze, the booze is what gets you? Mm. Booze get like booze slows you down Definitely. for sure. Like I feel way better without a couple of drinks, but I like a couple of drinks. I yeah, enjoy yeah. it. So it's like the balancing act of I wish I could have a couple of drinks. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't see the point. I don't I like You want a bucket. You well, I just don't see the point. It's like decaf coffee or you know, you don't like see what? the point of a couple of drinks? No, because I want to get You're ready to go party. Yeah. <laughs> And I was saying this, you know, before we came out, I'm like, I, I wish I could just smoke weed because I did that through. So for most of my 20s, I did everything to avoid having to get sober again and a lot of my 30s. And I definitely was trying to, like, manage it. And there were years where I just smoked weed and didn't drink. But what happens to me is that it'll be a gorgeous day like this and I'll be down in Venice and I'll smoke some weed and then maybe I'll get a little racy because the weed is racy and then I want to balance it out with that gorgeous looking half from on the waterfront and next thing you know I'm doing lines in the townhouse like that's <laughs> that's where it goes every time for me do you think that there's like a well oiled groove that's in your brain that once you get some substances in there like woo you I know wonder what to do here I wonder what it is because it's interesting because so many um this is why I love like 12 step because no one fucking wants to be there. And they're some of the funniest places ever. And then I'll hear people come talk about like 12 step and how it doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it, it works for a lot of people. And every time I go, I get to listen to like essentially some fucked up story that turned into a miracle. <laughs> like some guy who was like, and then I had hookers and then I was yeah! jailed. And then now like, and you've been sober and you're like an upstanding, like there, these rooms yeah. are filled with people who would be menaces to society, myself included. I came out of a blackout driving on the 405 yeah, it was one of the hands down most terrifying moments of my life. Whoa. It was, and I had been at Universal Studios, so I had driven all the way from Universal to the 405, getting on the 10. You didn't even know how you got there. I had no recollection. Apparently, I had been out with a bunch of people, and I got scared when I was at the bar because there were these guys following me around. I was oh, with a bunch of like high p poker high rollers. And I made alcoholism look amazing. <laughs> you know I did. what's crazy? Like people, but they were love security it. guards. I didn't know this. People they love it when you can get off drugs. Like that's one addiction that people take very seriously, and they're happy for you when you get off of drugs or alcohol. But if you get off of gambling, nobody yeah. gives a fuck. No, no, nobody no. Gives a fuck. Well, some people do. I mean, it's funny because I've had four. I've helped four people quit smoking weed in the past year. And it is gnarly. And part of the problem, I know you. Skeptical I know you give me this. Face. I know, I know, I know. You don't want to hear it. Um, but these are people who were really addicted to it, and they couldn't Physically stop. Physically or mentally. Well, I think the physical part you get over. It's just that the they, they wanted. To it's be, insidious because you get laughed at. They wanted that fuzzy distance. Yeah, the fuzzy distance. And it's easy. And yeah. it's like, for me, what I noticed was that um, it was like this weed seal glass kind of ceiling made of smoke. And once I stopped, quit smoking weed, it, I was suicidally depressed for two years. Like two, two years. Two years? I smoked for 20 years in my developmental teenage years. I don't think I had any- It took you two years to get- I mean, it's an oil. I think it gets in your fat. Well, I hear that before, too. I don't think there's any real logic No, I don't that. think there's any science. No. I, I just know from my experience that it took me a while to, like, get back online. Got it. And I felt like I was having a hard time kind of boosting up to, like, where I na I'm naturally, like, a happy go I wake up and I'm like, tra-la-la, -la, but for the two first years I got sober, it was gnarly. It was mm. ugly. I think pe there's different people. I mean, I'm just joking around about them not being addicted. I think there's people that get addicted to a lot of things. Well, it's been what's the problem is that y people don't take it seriously. Yeah. So they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's not a real addiction. Well, because it doesn't kill anybody. So if, when someone right. says that I'm addicted to pot, like, ah, get over it. But it's like you won't do, but so you don't do anything. You know, I'm like, yeah, you won't do anything. You won't kill anybody. You just won't do anything. And. I think from my experience, the clarity that I got at the is um, kind of priceless. I mean, I used to write this stuff and think that I was just so funny or so insightful. And it was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like, That's the most embarrassing thing when you write something high journals. and you think it's good. I'm going to come back and read oh, my journals no. that I wrote when I was high and thought oh, I was no. so insightful. And you can tell I'm just high and drunk, like <laughs> writing, thinking that I'm being like so insightful. But occasionally you'll get gems. 
Yeah. Occasionally marijuana will let a little fucking air through and you're like, oh, what is this I found? <laughs> I miss it. I was saying that the addict in me, it's the thing I love the most. I've always loved it the most. And the addict in me, I'm like, I'm worried I'm going to like give myself cancer so that I need to so do <laughs> Like subconsciously, and That's then when hilarious. I got sober, I did get cancer. I got basil cell. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, but basil cell, like, is I was like, I guess I need to smoke weed now. My friend's like, it's basil cell, Bridget. Like, it's not real what cancer. What is basil cell? It's um, I don't know. It's it's, it's like the type the, of skin cancer. It's skin cancer, but it's like the least. I have a scar here. It's like the least. Um, it's Dangerous. not mel- Yeah, it's right. it's kind of a joke. I mean, joke. maybe. Didn't maybe it kill Bob Marley? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll Google this and find out it kills like millions of people. But it was my doctor made practically a joke of it. Uh, it's kind of like the Beto O'Rourke of of skin oh, cancer. Oh, that guy! It's like it wants a lot of attention, but Can you it's if he became president. But it's completely ineffective. <laughs> that guy's adorable. No, he's so his name is so close to Beta too. I know Beta. He is. Yeah, I know. I know. Do you think that he's just like using his his like father in law's money? Um. Well, he definitely's doing that, right? Is that? Isn't he? I don't know. I, don't know. I have no. Well, evidence. I think he's a crazy guy who I'm thinks he's starting can be rumors on JoeRogan.com. Let's keep starting rumors. <laughs> I think he started the fire in the Palisades. <laughs> <laughs> He probably gave me cancer, too. He gave too. me skin cancer. Yeah, he's the one who made you drink. Yeah. He, pr- he provided the lines of the condo. I fuck it. I do. I do. Sometimes, like, I watch your podcast, and it's like, fuck, I, I wish I could just go drink whiskey with the boys <laughs> like I used to and, like, go travel the world. I was in Sri Lanka partying, and it was in- Did I, you ever have a good night partying, though, where it all, all worked All the out? time, yeah. Okay, and you had I, a good night where it didn't go off the rails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Maybe you're not an alcoholic. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do a whole stand-up routine about how when I quit drinking, my family gave me like a reverse intervention ah! because my my family's also um, they're so there's a little cute Fucked aunt. Up. No, it's like an Irish Catholic huge uh, family. Right. It's just part of the culture. Right. And they were like, "We're worried about you. <laughs> You're not drinking enough." That's hilarious. What are you pregnant? What are you sober? Yeah. What are you sober? Oh wait, you gonna get vegan now, Bridge? <laughs> You gonna start using condoms? What are you gonna do? Save the whales? You stop using plastic straws? Yep, yep. Yeah. You fucking lip tads out there. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's people that can't do stuff. Yeah. And there's I, people I, that can. I wish I could. I tried. I mean But you seem to be having a good time. It's a mere I'm still nuts. All the the second like wife stuff happened in sobriety that was like a crazy time that time in my it wasn't like college it was like i was like 37 years old it seemed like you had a little sidetrack no big deal i i'm i'm grateful it's a miracle that i did make it make it to getting sober like when i look from 20 to 35 i mean even those years when i moved back when i was here at 19 in the valley it was just a lot of playing dominoes and doing blow late into the dominoes ni- oh yeah all night with a bunch of like d-list like s- porn stars <laughs> and a lawyer who dealt us all of our blow and oh, it was just hilarious and it's i i was uh yeah i mean i and from that to like dating a really rich dude and being all over europe and drinking dom everywhere and being in saint tropez and i was like i've I've always joked. I've made it look amazing, but in, and people are like, "Why'd you quit? Why did you quit, Bridget?" And they want to hear some story, like I killed someone in a in a drunk driving accident, something that they can. And I'm like, I was just dying inside. Like something in me knew that I could do better. Like I knew, there's like a little voice that always sure. knew. And part of it was being in rehab at 19. Like it wasn't like I had evidence. There's that, plenty of hints. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine me on Twitter in 2016 with alcohol and drugs. I would, I'd be banned. I'd be canceled, <laughs> and I'd be banned. Yeah, uh, you just, you could just say you had a problem with substances, and now you're clean. Mm. You, you were sick. No, you I would have been disease. banned from Twitter Maybe. for sure. So you start a new account. A lot of people do that. <sighs> I don't know. I'm, really I'm, 
I'm grateful you do Sober October because it does make me feel, I. it's like the one month that I can safely not w- watch your podcast and not be like white well, knuckling it. I'm enjoying it. It's not bothering me at all. I, I really have, uh, I like a glass of wine with meals. Yeah, you know, yeah. With steak. I miss that too. I um, never I had like one glass of wine. I like a cold beer on a hot day, but I'm not having a problem. I like it. You know, and I'm just working out a lot. I think too, knowing there's an end makes it easier it does but one like thing that i'm seeing like is the, one the way i feel like it, when i do shows at night like tonight i have uh two shows tomorrow night i have two shows and i know i'm not gonna be drinking either show so i know when i wake up in the morning i'm gonna feel good and do you notice a difference in your sh- is there a difference in your shows a little bit yeah yeah i mean i'm i probably am more coherent my timing's probably a little better mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but then maybe I'm not as loose. But by the end of the month, like right now, I'm the 20th. You know, it's the 22nd. It's all gravy. Do you it's think that your audience would turn on you if you were ever like, I'm sober? done? Yeah. No. Oh, that'd be fine. No one gives a fuck what you do. It's true. You could be sober or not. So as long as you, if you're funny, if you're doing well, if like the people are coming to see you and you're putting in the work and they're laughing, they're having a good time. Yeah. You're, you're putting on a good show. They're not going to be mad at you. Yeah. Bridget, I got to wrap this up. I know. It's three o'clock. It's it been amazing. Really, we did it. Yay. We did it. We'll Thank do it again. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. We'll it do it so again fun. for sure. Okay. Tell people your Twitter handle. Oh, how they get a hold uh, of you. at Bridget Fettesy. You can find me. Uh, Spell that out. B-R-I-D-G-E-T-P-H-E-T-A-S-Y. You can find my um, Walk-Ins Welcome podcast on anywhere. And I have uh, da- the weekly Dumpster Fire show on YouTube, which is Bananas. Yay! Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for doing this. It was fun. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. That was so fun. Thank you.